two weeks, but uh, under the current circumstances, uh, not being able to, to shoot at your house currently, uh, we decided to uh, do another live stream, something a little different. Our uh, variety hour, we'll call it. Uh, we were we're gonna have Thomas react. We're gonna do some some live react. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a lot of, a lot of fun. We're gonna do a, a bit of a, a smaller Q and A, a version of our Q and A. Yep. Uh, and then we're also going to do a fun product feature. You brought something special along, so we'll do that later on in the show as well. Uh, so it, this is a bit of a strange new format for us. So bear with us. There may be some technical difficulties here and there. I'll do my best. But uh, thank you so much for joining us, regardless, and thank you for sticking with us. Um, like I said, your your house is not currently suitable for shooting. It is not. Uh, as I'm sure many of you have seen in the last video uh, that we put out there, Dorian decided to come and pay us a visit in Nova Scotia and was less than kind to our studio in my basement. Um, so for any of you who may not have seen that video yet, basically what happened is a tree branch uh, came off a tree near my house, smashed the window, um, a bunch of water got in, um, however it got in, and uh, destroyed a lot of stuff. Um, thankfully, everybody's safe. It is just stuff, so uh, it's not that big of a deal. You know, the important thing is Brian and myself and everybody else uh, in Nova Scotia are safe and sound, um, but it sucks because, uh, you know, all the projects that we've been working on are down there, and all the things we've been... Uh, filming and featuring and looking film we're all down there so um for instance the discus mega build is currently uh up in the air we don't know what's going to happen with it the stand is damaged so we're not going to be able to use that stand so we'll have to figure something out um but again it is just stuff and we're very thankful that that's all that happened uh we do want to kind of give you an update on what's happening in the studio so as it stands right now um the studio has essentially been gutted uh, everything has been taken out of it and kind of shoved uh, into my garage for the time being. Um, all of the uh, drywall about two feet off the ground, the entire basement has all been removed. All the flooring has been removed. All the doors have been removed. Tons and tons of stuff is just gone. So uh, that'll all be kind of rectifying itself uh, thanks to the company who's coming to take care of it. And my insurance has covered it. So uh, if any of you were wondering how we were making out that way, we're fine. Um, it, it's going to take approximately one and a half to two months. So Brian and I are going to be a little bit more creative. We'll probably do some more live streaming like this format uh, just to fill in the gaps while we wait for the studio to... And, and I promise audio will be on point from the beginning next time. Oh. they could. It was lower sound, but we fixed it. Okay. okay. We're working with this okay. new... Yeah, yeah. Anyway. But uh, yeah, so if you guys want a quick walkthrough, I don't know if you've got that video. I got the up. video. Cool. Let's cue it Here's up. Here's a, a quick. Make sure that we uh, audio is good for that. Yeah, we're good there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Here's a quick uh, walkthrough of what the basement currently looks like. There we are. You can see it there. Yeah. So just everything's everything's just uh, been removed essentially, and we've just got a buttload of fans down there, um, trying to dry out the structure. Um, and, and basically get the basement into a position where we can start uh, fixing it up and getting it reworked and turning it back into the studio it once was. Um, I'm, I'm not sure, uh, you know, 100% what we're gonna do in terms of uh, repainting and stuff. Obviously, when this happens, you can, you, you can change the flooring or whatever and change the paint on the walls. So I don't know, I'm kind of thinking maybe we'll switch things up a little bit from what it was before and kind of have like a whole new start, like a Studio 2.0 kind of thing, given the, uh, you know, the circumstances. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, it's, it's crazy. Like the city your basement is nuts. It, like it's, it's funny how much <laughs> damage water can do. And it's even funnier that I have so many gallons of water in aquariums down there and in, in general, I've had so much water uh, in all of my houses in, in aquariums and have never to this point had an aquarium pop or leak or anything like that causing damage. So it's funny to me in an ironic kind of way that given my job and what I do, that water damage happened and it had nothing to do with what I work with. That's, yeah, it's, it's insane. And it's 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 crazy seeing that. Like your, your basement is uh, in total upheaval right now. Yeah, watching like the the top, like what's that like two feet off the bottom of the two walls? feet yeah two feet two feet off the top of the flooring so it's actually two feet and I think the floor was yeah. like a quarter of an inch thick so yeah it's it's a bit 
But you know what? Whatever. It's it's literally just stuff, yes. and it's just some time that's uh, unfortunately kind of getting wasted in a way. But I guess that just forces Brian and I's creative Brian and I's creative hand and figuring out some other ways to do things. I do want to say, guys, I appreciate so much all of the support you've been giving us. Um, it really helps, especially uh, me, because I'm, I'm carrying all this guilt because I'm not going to be able to fulfill these, um, you know, videos we had started and these projects that were going on. And I feel this, you know, this this huge drive to make sure that you guys you know, get to enjoy this content that you've been following because I know it's as important to you as it is to me. So thank you so much for all of the awesome comments on that video. That that video got so many comments so fast. Yeah. It's kind of a whirlwind of positivity and uh, I really appreciate it. I read all of the comments. Even if I don't comment back, I do read them. Even the ones that say, stop crying and get a haircut. <laughs> I'm assuming you're just jealous of my beautiful hair. So, um, Thank you so, so much. Most of you have been really sensitive about this. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you guys are amazing, <laughs> and I absolutely love it. Um, some of you even brought up GoFundMe pages and stuff, and I really appreciate that offer, um, but I'm going to kind of push that in a different direction. Uh, many of you know the Bahamas were absolutely thrashed by Dorian um, in ways that are going to change the Bahamas forever, in ways that are impacting people's lives um, <laughs> by a magnitude that is hard to even imagine. So uh, what we would like to do, if if you want to support um, victims of Dorian and, and try to help them rebuild their lives because we'll be just fine, I, I would really love for you to go and check out, I'm sure Brian's got a link here. I can link it now. Go check out the Bahamas support page and, and you know give them something to help rebuild what they've lost. It is absolutely devastating and if you haven't seen what's happened i i encourage you to have a look because it is heart-wrenching and you know um giving giving to them is going to make so much of a difference uh to their lives and and i think that's the right place to to put that kind of support so thank you so much guys again i really appreciate it uh if you can support the bahamas please please do yeah like trying today i mean we we got one super chat already uh, to, to help you out uh let's read it here uh, michael says uh, hey thomas something to put towards repairing some projects keep on tanking thank you we so appreciate much. it going forward here guys uh we appreciate the super chats the support means a lot to us uh but we'd like to say if you are gonna if you're about to super chat us maybe hold off on that and send that money to the the red cross link that i sent you there to help uh, those victims of hurricane dorian Absolutely. I think it would be money uh, better spent helping those people who lost a lot more than we did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in some cases, their lives, their families, their friends. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so donate there. Give give that money today. Give that to them. Uh, I donated, donated last night. Uh, it just... They need it more than we do. We luckily, yeah, insurance is covering uh, covering Thomas's this, this basement. The studio will be okay. And, and Big Al's is going to be uh, oh. dealing with the aqu aquariums, all the stands that were damaged, all of that. So Absolutely. we're covered. So we do appreciate your help. Uh, and again, funneling that money to the people who uh, don't have the support that we've had uh, would be uh, very, very good. So thank you guys so much. Yeah, we really appreciate that. The support has been, yeah, like uh, everyone watching that video and really making us feel uh, oh. so supportive. Like such a such a nice uh, community we have. There here. is a weight on my shoulders of not being able to finish like the mega build and stuff, like and and just things getting pushed off and derailed. And you guys made me feel so much better. Yeah. Like the comments basically saying, you know, get things sorted out. We'll be here when you're ready to start doing content again. Like. Yeah, made so, a difference to my mental health during that whole oh, yeah. whole situation. Oh yeah, it was rough. I mean, you, I know you were feeling pretty down. Obviously, I mean, it's, yeah, we had some people saying like, "That's not a. This is not catastrophic." What it's happened? Not. And but but it's you know, stressful. Yeah, and on in the in the small scale of of the studio and and the, the projects that we had, it was catastrophic in that vein, and so it was very uh, disappointing. But yeah. uh, again, uh, we we felt so much better uh, having oh, you guys sure. with us uh, through all of that. Um, so I guess with that said, uh, today's uh, variety show, uh, we have a lot of things uh, planned. Um, so I think what we'll do, if you want to jump right into React. Let's do some React. Now again, I've never we haven't done live React before, so there's a lot of juggling I have to do. So I'll, I'll try and make this work as smoothly as possible. Cool. So bear with us. And now you guys will see that this is honestly how I just react to stuff. <laughs> yes, yeah. We can't movie magic this. We can confirm he's never seen these before. I got these already last night. Uh, we'll do Q and A later as well. So uh, just so you yeah. guys know, we, uh, if you do have questions, we're gonna we're not gonna like go in sequence. We're gonna kind of cherry pick questions later, and it'll be a lot of fun as well. But for now, let's jump into our um, our React. 
So let's see if I can make this work smoothly. So I'll show you on the big screen. I'll put it up on the, the viewers on the small screen here. Uh, and make sure the sound is working okay. Yeah, the sound seems to be working all right. This first one is from Zahira. I think it's Zahira. And uh, Zahira says, Hi, I would like Thomas to review uh, my tank. I got some chilled fish, some chilled fish, few tetra, pleco, and also four angelfish. I added some aquatic plants. I'm new to this hobby, so any advice would help. Thanks. Love from Malaysia. Really nice. Uh, the aquascape's great. It looks like they've got a planted substrate in there potentially, or just a very smooth pea gravel. Uh, it's an interesting mix of fish. Um, I can't really tell how large the tank is. They don't mention it. They don't it, mention right? it. No, they don't mention the size. Uh, I will say, based on what I'm seeing, <clears throat> as beautiful as the tank is, four angelfish and an African cichlid together in what is uh, what looks like, honestly, a pretty small, maybe 20-gallon uh, tank. There's too much fish. It's it's overstocked. Yeah, angels shouldn't be in there. They are gorgeous angels. So you're you're either gonna have to upgrade or probably uh, remove the African and remove the angels and kind of uh, change up your stocking plans. I would probably try maybe like a dwarf sunset garami or something like that, just because those angels are gonna get huge and uh, they will not nearly have enough space in there. They're already honestly at a point where if if I was keeping baby angels in a 20 gallon to raise them up to move them, they'd already be at that size, I'd be ready to move them. But that said, I think the tank looks great. Uh, the plants look healthy. I don't see any algae anywhere. I know you got a pleco in the back there working away, who's probably helping at least somewhat. It's really nice. The mossy stones I think are probably artificial but they add a really nice touch. Cool. And I love Danios. Those look like Danios to me. I could be wrong, but they look like some sort of Danio. They just, they're always together and they're always moving around and it's always so much fun. All right, should we move on to the next one? We'll, we'll, keep, we'll, we'll keep the react train rolling here. Yeah. Yes, let's do it. <clears throat> All right, next up we have Peter. Now, Peter says, I've been watching vids of Thomas, the Aqua Tanker, and just have to say I love the positivity and uplifting mood. Yay! Uh, anyways, here's my submission. 70 liter Jewel Primo 70 with a little Aquascape and stocked to the max, running beautifully on a Tetra EX800+. plus. A bunch of cherry shrimp that currently have baby shrimp. Uh, three Autosynclus. Six Cori Hastatus. Hastatus? 10 Dwarf Resbora, 12 Resbora Galaxy, 11 Ember Tetra. I might switch the Java Moss on the tree that's getting all the light and therefore grows a lot of algae. I try and try Monte Carlo. When the baby shrimp grow up a little, when the baby shrimp grow up a little. So I got to keep it yet for a while. Greetings from the Netherlands, Peter. Oh, I'm not showing you. That's right. I need to show yeah, you yeah, on the big screen. I yeah. gotta see. There we go. Let's show you on the big screen here. Uh, all our viewers can see it, but you can't. There oh, it is. check that's that it. out. Yeah. Very cool. Awesome aquascape. The background is really cool too. I, I love the fact that the background is basically a cloudy sky. Yeah. Uh, it, it really kind of uh, makes that fanciful <laughs> jungle theme come across even more. Like the tree appears more like a tree that way. The fish look like they're flying through the air. Very, <laughs> very cool. Um, I love the aquascape. I love uh, the placement of the tree. It's, it's basically following that beautiful rule of thirds. I love that you've got the pathway that kind of looks like it disappears beyond the... Uh, right side of the back of the tank there. All the plants look really, really healthy. Java moss, Java moss grows like crazy. That's just what it does. And the collection of fish is actually great. Now, this would have been a really nice one to also see as a, as a short video clip, yeah, just yeah. because the amount of small schooling fish in the tank probably add an, uh, a sort of activity to the aquarium that you just can't capture in a photo. Um, and, and I think it must look really, really nice man cool it's a lot of creativity and i really really dig it <clears throat> yeah. all the fish look happy and healthy too man that's awesome well done peter yeah thanks so much really appreciate it sweet all right let's uh move on to our next submission uh this one is from a youtube channel named bay area fish keeper bay area fish keeper so i'm me... guessing they're from the bay area i don't know man. that's a leap that's a leap okay so i'll let the viewers see it and i'll let you see it 
Uh, okay, so nice. <clears throat> he has a little write-up as well. Sure. Uh, hello from California. Being a viewer for some time now, thought I'd send an entry. Uh, let's see here. I've been keeping fish on and off for about 24 years, but have only kept planted tanks for about five. Nice. There's always new things to learn and appreciate this aquatic adventure. For fauna, 10 times Philippine blue angelfish. Nice. 80 times harlequin rasbora. I was going to say, there's quite a few of them harlequin rasboras in there. <laughs> 18 times autosynclus. Uh, uh, 25 times uh, a mono shrimp. Nice. Eight times pygmy quarries. Started nice. with four and then four babies appeared. So now a total of eight. Nice. Uh, three times dwarf chain loach. Five times Siamese algae eater. Uh, this tank is fully stocked and will not be seeing any more fish added, possibly downsizing fish population in the future to give more room for the angels as they grow. 125 gallon plant grow out in the works. Nice. Thanks for your time. So that is from channel, uh, Bay, yeah, YouTube channel Bay Area Fish Keeper. Very nice. I dig it. Uh, I love that you've basically created two small um, islands out of rock and rubble and stuff, and the plants are all kind of elevated. Uh, I love the bridge that kind of appears from the um, driftwood that's kind of going between the two islands. The white as a uh, substrate really contrasts all of the dark rock and the, the deep greens of the foliage. Um, it also really uh, helps those angels keep their lighter colors. Um, a lot of fish tend to either darken up or lighten up based on their surroundings. So it's nice for those uh, cobalts to uh, stay on the lighter side and contrast their background so much and having a lighter substrate can help with that. The, the population of uh, Harlequin Rasboras looks incredible. Again, if this was a short video clip, it would really highlight how amazing it is to have a big population of schooling fish. A lot of people will get a few, maybe, you know, up to 10 or 12 uh, neon tetras or cardinal tetras or uh, celestial pearl danios or whatever it is, whatever schooling fish. But you don't really get to appreciate uh, the magnitude of their schooling uh, until you have like a huge population of them. And 80 is definitely enough. <laughs> uh, it looks really, really cool. The plants look healthy. Everything's looking pretty slick in that tank. Um, I also love that you've basically got, it looks like an acrylic tank. Uh, you don't see a ton of acrylic, but one of the nice things about acrylic, um, other than uh, you know, the fact that it's a lighter material than glass is that its clarity tends to be a lot higher than glass, almost zero, um, you know, uh, effect on the color that uh, you're seeing because it's so clear. Um, and distortion is usually very low with a high quality acrylic. So all in all, it's got to be a very true representation of the colors of everything in the tank. And it just looks sweet. Yeah. I like the dimensions of the tank too. All in all, really nice. Great work in the Bay Area. Yeah. Uh, just a quick confirmation from you guys. How's everything looking so far? You guys are able to see all this, I hope, here, Thomas, and all his uh, his tips and advice. Uh, just give me a quick thumbs up in the chat uh, if everything's running smoothly for you guys on your end. Because, again, this new experimental format is nerve-wracking. I'm going to move my head. Oh, there's the tank. Yeah, there you go. And and feed. it's... it's. I'm just going to feed, feed, feed the fish. Oh, feed, there's the tank. Oh, the here fish. it is. This the is fish. the tank. Oh. All right, we're not, not getting any chat, so I'm getting worried here that uh, that things uh, may not be running as smoothly as I'm hoping. Uh, let's see. Oh, it says we're streaming. Okay, well, hopefully you guys can see all this. We'll move on to our next react. Oh, we got uh, Everyone think says got... it's good. Okay, cool. Sweet. Excellent news. That makes uh, me a very happy boy. Okay, so next up then, we'll move on to our next react. So I'll uh, put it up for the viewers first, and then I'll get it up for you there, TJ. Let's see here. Okay, now this one is from uh, Refat. <laughs> Refat says, 15-gallon fish tank. I'll upgrade them into a bigger tank when I move to a new house. Nice. P.S. I'm a beginner and need your advice. Thank you. Yeah. You know, for uh, first off, I'm going to say the fish look good. That's one of the first things I check. Um, you've got a little bit of algae going on. I can't tell if those... Yeah, that looks like it might be some uh, live Anubias or something there. So you've got a little bit of algae. It's on the, the glass I can see. It's on your rock work and stuff. That's probably telling me that you've got elevated nutrients either from potentially uh, overfeeding or feeding too often or simply not doing enough uh, water changes to help mitigate all of the nutrient that's in the water. So to help get rid of that algae, you can make sure that the light's only on when you're home to enjoy your fish or on a timer of around six hours. You don't really need it to be longer. Even for the Anubias, that'll be all right. Um, that'll help uh, slow down the algae growth. Then doing water changes a little bit more frequently. Like I would even start with once a week for now, if you're not already doing it uh, once a week. Do once a week, 25%. 
with that uh, reduction in lighting should help uh, get rid of some of that algae that you're experiencing. Uh, beyond that, like the fish look good, which is important. So you must be at least keeping the water chemistry uh, where it needs to be in terms of nitrate. You're probably getting phosphate, which is why you've got uh, a little bit more going on in terms of algae. Um, but yeah, nobody looks like they got pinched tummies. I'm just looking happy. Uh, I think the coral background is an interesting uh, <laughs> choice considering the driftwood and plants and stuff in the foreground. We've, but, we've seen that like the mixed sort of uh, yeah. theme yeah, before, this is, yeah. Um, this is pretty typical for somebody's like uh, first aquarium. You know, you're excited. You're just picking out things that look neat to you, and maybe not even thinking very much about how they're all going to look together. Yeah. Um, but uh, my my suggestion is, if you're going to go for a freshwater tank and want it to look a little bit more marine, going with a marine background will work. Uh, but if you also get some, uh, you know, pretty realistic marine looking ornaments, whether it's fake coral and fake live rock and stuff like that, to put in the tank along with them. That'll sometimes help. Not to say you can't also have live plants in there with that. You could easily do uh, like jungle valves and that could look a lot like kelp in the background type thing. Right. There's different ways to set it up so it still <clears throat> appears marine. Um, but yeah, I think you picked pretty decent fish because they're very, very bright. Uh, Cardinal tetras are extremely bright. Um, uh, dwarf sunset gouramis are very, very bright as well. So decent. I think there's even like a honey gourami in there possibly. But uh, but fruit. yeah, you're you're not doing bad. It seems you just it, there's there's a bit of a learning curve. Um, knowing when to do maintenance and how much maintenance to do, that'll play a role in mitigating algae and making sure it doesn't get to a point where you're seeing a lot of algae. And hopefully, my little advice is here for you today. Help you kind of get that all reined in. Yeah. Well, so, thanks for yeah. sending it in. Nonetheless, I'm I'm really glad and. One of the biggest, you know, reasons I wanted to do uh, this this whole YouTube thing was to to help people who are new to newer to the hobby. Uh, I used to work at store level, and I used to help people basically one on one, get either getting their first tank or correcting problems. But this is a great way for me to help a lot of people all at once. So, yeah, don't don't ever feel bad if you're sending me a tank and you don't think it looks amazing, but you just want advice. The React series isn't all about me just going whoa. Yeah, we actually you have know? we actually have someone commenting saying I'm genuinely terrified that you will show my tank photos that I send. They've come along. Like I think a lot of these people that oh, I do react to now are from ages ago. Yeah. So there's people who have learned since they've sent their photos in. For we have, sure. And so they're a little scared that we're going to show their previous like their beginning. Yeah, work. you don't got to be scared. I'm not I'm not a very harsh <clears throat> judge. Uh, I I sometimes get very concerned with things that I see, but I'm I don't drill people for anything. Like. I don't know where you learned what you learned or, you know, what research you've done or if you've been misguided by somebody. So I never like look at a tank and go, you're bad. That's just not how I roll. You know, I'm here to help and to educate and to, you know, make everybody's tanking a little bit more fun for them. And, yeah. and you know, that's that's what this is all about. I'm, yeah. not, here, I'm not here to drill anyone. <clears throat> so don't don't worry about it. You can always send an update. And then we can see the update too. Yeah. That's even more fun. That is a lot of fun. We love getting those updates. Uh, so we've got a bunch more to go, but I want to say, guys, if you haven't yet, hit the like button. It would really help us out. Uh, we, we're going to be doing an extended show today. It's a, a little longer, lots of time, and we want it to kind of be a, a fun little party during this variety show. So hit that like button, share the link, share share our, our, uh, our stream with everyone. Who dropped the fitty? Oh, uh, let's see. You know what? We're, we're so busy doing stuff. Let's see. I'm going to assume that's... Uh, I'm going to say t his name is Tim. Tim, Tim Bennett. Bennett. Tim Bennett with a fitty. You guys, we do really appreciate You're cray -cray. it. You're cray-cray. As usual, we do thank you so much for that, Tim. <clears throat> Very generous every time you got you show up and help us out. Uh, again, Tim, we are, you rock, bud. <clears throat> we, yeah, that's awesome, and we do appreciate it, and we'll put it towards something very... I know we're looking at getting a new uh, underwater uh, 360 GoPro. That's in the works, so I'm hoping to get... So maybe this might go toward that. That could be fun. That could be a lot of fun to, you know, once we get tanks up and running, uh, have some pretty cool underwater 360 footage for you guys to share with all of you. So we do appreciate that from you guys. That really helps us out. Absolutely. Uh, now, I, we do want to reiterate uh, for the stream that uh, if you guys are wanting to hit us up with Super Chats, we do love you for it and appreciate it, but uh, that money today, we'd rather you uh, put that uh, toward uh, the Hurricane Dorian Relief with Red Cross or any charity that you feel uh, would, would help out the, the people of, of the Bahamas because they're getting hit with another uh, uh, tropical oh, storm yeah not another hurricane but another storm so they're going to get wet real wet again so uh, yeah help them out help guys. them out they, yeah, they yeah. need it for sure i still got a roof over my head <clears throat> you know <laughs> everything's going to be fine we're just talking about stuff over over at my place but they their lives are going to be changed forever by what's happened so yeah 
Help him out. Yeah, but we do appreciate it nonetheless, uh, you guys, for for your chats. We had another one from, uh, let's see here, who else sent that one? Uh, Walter Dubel. Thank you. Yes, we do appreciate That's it. Thank awesome. you so much. Uh, any, any love is good love for us, so we really appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, hit that like button. Keep this, keep the stream going. Uh, invite more people. Let them know we're doing this. We're going to have a lot of fun here. We have a bunch more reacts, so uh, you should probably get your friends here to see. Uh, next. React, up, react, react, react. Give me another up. one. This one is from, I'll share, share it with the viewers first. This one is from Emily. And here, I'll uh, put it up here for you, Thomas. Yes. Okay, so this is from Emily. Let me, <laughs> let me see if she had a, uh, a write-up here. Dig it. It's uh, a 15-gallon. Uh, greetings. Uh, the bed is tank. My first planted tank. See the before and after. Uh, oh, I didn't include the after because uh, this, this was the better photo. The before wasn't very good lighting. So uh, hardscape is locally scavenged. Uh, stay tuned for the 75-gallon South American tank. Cheers, nice. Emily. Well, Emily, it looks like you've got uh, a 15, I think it's about a 15 gallon tank. You got a beta in a, a reasonably sized aquarium, which I love to see. Lots of plants. You've got some uh, swords in there, uh, Miriam moss balls. You've got an Anubius uh, back there. And you've got, it looks like you got some floating prant, pl prants, plants, <laughs> maybe frog bit or something like that. Uh, looks awesome. You've got some rummy nose tetras in with your beta. Uh, nice group of schooling fish that are very quick, easy, easy for the beta to, um, Mistake as nothing, basically. Beta's not gonna care. Very easy for them to get away from the beta. They're very fast. Beta's got a big flowy wedding dress attached to his butt, so good luck catching them. <laughs> um, not a bad not a bad mix. Uh, I love the driftwood you've picked. You said it was locally, locally sourced. Yeah, locally scavenged. Yeah. Same with the uh, the rock. It looks really, really nice. The clamshell, I am on the fence about a lot of the time. Uh, I don't often put anything calcium carbonate if I can avoid it. So in this, with it's, it's, not, it's not aesthetic that bothers you. It's the idea. Of no, 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 no. The aesthetic doesn't bother me. There are freshwater clams and stuff. Uh, I mean, none of them will look like that, but there are fresh, f freshwater clams and stuff. Uh, the thing is, um, saltwater clams, the calcium carbonate in their shell uh, in lower pH is just going to add like hardness to the water like crazy and raise the pH back up. So if you're trying to have a lower pH, like for the tetras and stuff, you may have a harder time with the shell in there. I mean, the volume of water and the size of the shell maybe not as big of an issue but if you're aiming for 6.5 to 7 with a shell like that in there you're probably going to be having a hard time getting under 7.5 although it's hard to say that could even be fake and i just can't tell because it's a picture fair enough but yeah no i love it looks great again aquascaping was really decent uh i like the mix of uh fish and plants in there now jumping up well jumping up to a 75 gallon south american is that is that a, an easy leap to make um, something like this? Look, uh, this is what I'll say. Once you have like the fundamentals of aquarium keeping down, it doesn't matter what you keep at yeah. that point. As long as you put the research in for the actual uh, critters you're keeping, the actual fish themselves and what their specific requirements are, it's, it's all very similar. The maintenance is going to be similar. Like it might be for you know africans or something like that you may be adding a buffer or something to the water but it's a skill that you already learn through adding water conditioner right? right so no once once you've got it going on uh you you can pretty much apply those skills to any type of aquarium and just you know learn the ins and outs of each individual species and a lot of people do that a lot of people will have multiple aquariums throughout their uh, their hobby and multiple different um types of fish or biotopes that they set up or you know it's yeah it's an experience yeah it, you get the bug for some people not everybody some people just want to tank in their house and they keep their fish and that's always going to be enough for them but uh some people will you know see um the different fish at the store and want to experience having that fish it's, it becomes very educational and it becomes uh kind of like uh this this drive to collect all the experiences of having these different fish or even trying to breed these different fish mm -hmm. so yeah no it's it's pretty awesome yeah well awesome emily thank you so much for sending that in uh we do appreciate that we have a few more to go here Yay! yeah we, we, we try i'm trying not to uh, overwhelm everyone with react but we have uh, a good amount of people to get through here so this next one let me put this up for our lovely viewers our live viewers here this one is from uh, Rashish. Rashish, I believe his name is. Let's uh, let's bring it up on the screen for you. Nice. There it is. So let me see the uh, the email here. Uh, Lots of Ludwigia. Here's my tank for your consideration. I'll start with the best part. Everything you see in this picture, apart from the foreground plant, is from Big Al's. Hey, that's, nice. that's awesome. Oh, Thank thanks. you. Yeah, that's great. Uh, tank and everything inside. Uh, a bit about my tank. It's 
10 months old. That was a Sweet. while ago, but 10 months old. I got it last Boxing Day when Josh helped me getting everything I need. So Josh is one of our, for those of you who may not know, Josh is one of our video hosts and aquatics enthusiasts uh, who's uh, a great uh, great asset for us. We love we love Josh and he helped this guy out. So that's awesome. Glad to hear. Started as a glowfish tank with all fake decorations. Uh, this is where the colored palettes in my substrate as well as my gravel substrate come from. Since then, I've changed it to planted tank. I have Bacopa, Java Fern, Anubius, uh, Star Oh, maybe it's Bacopa. S. Repens. Uh, what I was told is a normal baby tear. What I was told is a normal baby tear, but I'm not sure if it is. Uh, foreground plant in front of the castle. I'll try and make that bigger for you so you can maybe actually see what, what he's talking about sure. there. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, That's, uh, so, yeah, yeah. Anyways. Yeah. I had some algae issues, so I tried controlling the light, which is why my Repens looks taller and, and the stems are visible. But I'll control that soon enough. The Anubius looked bad, but that's a huge improvement to the amount of algae it had. I'm working on it. My goal is to eventually make this an absolute jungle. I'd love some suggestions on plants I can use to make this more bushy. The fish I have are six neon tetras, one platy, two mollies, two queen bo botias, sure. and one nerite snail, which has avoided being eaten by the botias for months now. Total ninja. <laughs> so that's his tank. So, that's awesome. So suggestions first for making it bushy. What would you say? Um, okay, so one of the things uh, you got to know about a lot of plants and stem plants and stuff is the, the spectrum of light you use and um, how much light they receive along with nutrients and CO2 and stuff will all change the way plants will appear and how fast they grow, so on and so forth. If you have less light, stem plants especially will tend to grow longer and leggier and just try as fast as possible to reach it. Um, to a point, like sometimes if they don't have what they need, they're just not going to thrive and just, uh, you know, kind of disappear. But obviously yours are growing tall and they've got leaves all the way down, uh, basically to the substrate. So what you can do, number one, with stem plants is you can, as they get too tall, trim them, uh, basically trim them all off. And then those trimmings that are the top parts of the plants, you take the last few leaves off the bottom and allow it to start growing some roots and you can just plant those back down and drop the whole background of plants down again and that'll help them basically look bushy once more um one of my favorite plants for getting really thick and bushy is uh a java uh fern but it's the trident leaf variety now i've used that in a few tanks and the trident leaves Man, when they get going, they are incredibly dense. They grow very, very dense, very spiky looking, but very, very nice and bushy. Um, mosses like Java moss, uh, Taxophila mosses, Vesicularia mosses, um, so flame moss, uh, weeping moss, Christmas moss, they will all also grow very bushy and compact um, the more light you give them. So having a good amount of light is definitely going to help with that, that you know, bushy growth that you're looking for. Uh, but with that, you may also need to uh, add CO2 or a CO2, uh, I'm not going to call it a replacement, but a CO2 um, liquid additive. It's usually just a carbon source of some kind, not really true CO2, but it can help. So yeah, that's what I would do for the plants. Um, also, if your substrate, if you don't have a planted substrate in there, uh, which You've got glowfish substrate in there, which you've already mentioned. Uh, root tabs will really help. So what you want to do is get a pack of root tabs uh, from Seachem. Just uh, get those tabs and stuff them in the gravel near the plants. The instructions in there are perfectly fine. Read them. It's really, really simple. You basically just stuff them within a few inches of the plants all the way across, and it'll give them some access to nutrients that aren't in your inert substrate. So yeah. But I mean, other than that, you're doing awesome, dude. Looking good. Yeah. Really like it. All right. Thanks so much, Rashish. Appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I mean, everything from Big L's, that's awesome. You are you flatter us today, Rashish. Yeah. What a nice guy. Okay, next up we have Amanda. Now I'll put it up for the viewers first. And then uh, as usual for, for my main man, Tom is here. All right. So Ooh. this is from Amanda. <laughs> I like the background. Yeah. So uh, let me, oh, I had it on her email. Okay. So, hey guys, I uh, love watching your videos and live stream. Thank Thanks, you. Amanda. I uh, thought I would share with you my 55-gallon planet tank. It's a fairy garden-style aquascape with guppies acting as fairies in this case. Hope you enjoy. And uh, I didn't include the photo, the uh, other photo she sent. This one's just with the lights off. That's so Yeah, so cool. you see, like, the lights behind it glowing in the background. So that's her uh, I, I love garden. this. I've never had anybody send me a fae-themed uh, aquarium ever. 
That's really, really cool. Yeah. And this is actually a really good example of how uh, like valves can basically shoot straight up to the surface and then wisp across the surface. Yeah, of the water. look at those. It's really nice. I love, I, I think it's so cool that you've used um, string lights in the background of the tank to kind of uh, set the mood, you know, also appear a little fae like like there's little fairies in the background yeah. at night and even during the day. Guppies as a, as a uh, fairy substitute is a super cute idea. They're a very small fish. Uh, by comparison to a lot of others. In a 55, they're gonna look quite small. They've got those large flowy fins. It's very, very cool. Yeah. You've got, it looks like a pennywort over on the side there or something to that effect, hydrocaudal maybe. Um, some chain swords perhaps, uh, crypts, uh, and, and uh, oh, I don't even know what that, that plant there is. Which Either one? way, it looks really nice. Yeah. It looks really well well thought out and kind of put together. Um, I love the fact that you've you've capped uh, the one side of the tank with sand to kind of differentiate it from the other darker side where all the valves are. It's very cute. I love like I can I can feel the mood of the aquarium just looking at it. Yeah, I love the the warm appearance, the lighting, everything. Whew. Whew. I like it. Yeah, I awesome. It. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. You know what? I'm going to mix it up a bit. We still have a few more to go. I think uh, we have two or three more to go, but let's save those for later in the show. Sure. Let's yeah, do let's, them uh, up later. Let's jump back into, uh, I say Q&A. Sure. Want to do some Q&A? Now, we've got, yeah. a, we've got a lot of people here in the chat asking questions, so we will- Oh, who's uh, our $9? $9.99 guy. That is- Oh, that's a question we'll get to, actually. Oh, cool. So, let's move to- I forgot to play the title card. I'll have to play the React title card later. So, let's move into uh, our Q&A section now. Okay, so that was our fancy little title card that I worked very hard on. Next up, we have a question from Apex Fizz, uh, who sent us a super chat. Thank you very much. We do really, really appreciate it. Uh, hello, I was wanting to swap my uh, overpowered FX4 out on my 30 gallon because it's just a big sponge filter. Maybe a DIY hang on back canister that houses more media. Any thoughts or suggestions? Thank you for your time. The FX4 is a lot more than just a big sponge filter. Well, I've, I've heard that a lot. I've seen people, a few people say that. Like, it seems to be not a popular opinion, but uh, an opinion. It's it's a funny opinion, uh, really. So here's the thing. You don't have to put the sponges in it. They're just trays. It's a gigantic bin that you can just put the trays in and put whatever media you want in there, whether it's floss or sponge or bags of carbon or whatever the heck you want to stick in there, bio media, what have you. I actually have no gripes with the FX filters. Um, they're, they're like... Up until that point, I wasn't very fond of Fluval uh, canisters in general, but uh, when their FX filters came out, I was, I was really impressed. So I think it's funny that people just refer to them as giant sponge filters. I think it's like what haters have just put right. on the internet. Sure. Anyways, you know me, I'm an Eheim guy, but I would not say that about the Fluval filter. Uh, if you want to do a DIY filter, that's cool. Um, there are lots of different uh, DIYs to follow out there. I'm not going to give you any specifically just because I haven't done them, so... I can't really give you my opinion on them. Um, but yeah, that's obviously an option. The other option is get an Eheim. Uh, 2215 on a 30 gallons, plenty. We uh, had a lot of people saying they're waiting for you to, to bring up Eheim. Hey, Eheim! Eheim for life! <laughs> yeah, man. No, uh, so the, the classic series are very, very simple in their setup. Um, they're very basic. There's not a lot of things to go wrong with them. Uh, and more importantly, they come with the media and it's heavily biological. And then they actually tune the flow rating of their filters for what they rate the aquarium sizes of them for, specifically to the biomedia so that you're not ripping water past it faster than is optimal for the biomedia. So yeah, 2215, even a 2213 on a 30 gallons, great. But a 2215 would probably be what I would do and it would do a really great job. But if you want to try DIY, go for it. Yeah, awesome. All right, let's uh, let's. But yeah, out. it's not a sponge filter. Come on, people. FX filters are just like every other canister in terms of how you can make them work. Uh, and can anyone give me any tips about getting rid of anchor worms? I can't. No? Medicaid, that's the only thing I can think of. I'm not even that great with medication, like fully admit that. So you're gonna to wanna to talk to our support team. Uh, they'll probably want some pictures from you too, just to make sure that it's being ID'd correctly. But yeah, medication for anchor worm is probably your best bet. 
Fair enough. All right, moving on to the next one then. In that case, uh, anyone know if you can attach a live plant to a fa fake tank decor? Yes, absolutely. Anubias, um, uh, Java ferns, uh, Java mosses, any of the mosses really, don't really care much about what they're attaching to as long as they have something to attach to. Any rhizome plant that uses its roots to wrap onto something as an anchor will probably wrap onto just about anything. Rock, driftwood, resin ornament, coral skeleton whatever <laughs> cool let's see what else we got here we had a ton earlier you think my tea is still too hot uh, it's probably too, mine's still pretty high tell me covered. in the chat do you think my tea is still too hot it's in a tumbler and we made it like at the beginning of this just before the stream started With boiling hot water it's too hot you'll burn your tongue and then you won't be able i want to see what people think should i try it uh let's see what are people saying uh nothing yet but i'm, I'm gonna say yes uh, I'm gonna try it. Yeah, try. Give, give it a, give slow it a shot. I hope I don't burn my face. Thomas, uh, okay, you're drinking. I will. You can take the lid off. It's probably, Aye. It's because otherwise, it's a concentrated hot water yes, flow right I'm to gonna the. I'm gonna have to. You know what? First off, it is do, still do, much. Do you want me to grab you cool. like an ice cube or something? No, I, I got this water too. I'm just... Fair enough, Thomas. If you want a big school, would you add it all at once? I have a 450 liter, and I'm thinking of adding 40 cherry barbs. I would uh, add it probably in groups of. 10 to 20 depending you could do it all at once but only if the tank is already like cycled for that population and what i mean by that is you have to consider that dropping a large population of fish into a tank all at once unless the tank is absolutely massive um versus the fish you're putting in you're just adding a lot of bio load all in one shot and that can be hard on on the filter in the sense that if you're bacterial um the bacteria in your filter and in the aquarium as a whole if there isn't enough of that bacteria to compensate for the amount of waste going in, they can't process it all fast enough, you'll end up with ammonia and that's just gonna hurt your fish. So yes, you can do it, but it all depends on whether or not your tank is already cycled for the amount of bio load you're about to put in. All right, uh, let's see what else here. Uh, a lot of very supportive comments. So we Guys, you're amazing. That. You, all of you are amazing. I appreciate all of you so, 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 so much. Yeah. Hi, I sent pictures from my saltwater tank a few months ago. Sorry, it's taking us a while to get through these react. I assume that's what he's talking about. Uh, I would like to know, what's your favorite salt brand? Oh, it's so hard because everything changes and evolves like every year. It'll be all right, buddy. Um, right now, here's the thing. I've used lots of different salts and they all get the job done. Um, I've used... Uh, what do I like recently? I really do like Red Sea Salt. I've used Red Sea's uh, Coral Pro Salt for a very long time. That's their elevated uh, salt. Um, on any future uh, aquariums that I'm setting up salty for the channel, I'm going to be using the Red Sea Blue Bucket, which is uh, not elevated. It's a little bit more true to what you'd expect in the oceans. And then um, I'll probably just try to maintain those parameters. But Red Sea Salt is really, really good. I've always uh, liked it quite a bit. I've used Instant Ocean in the past for like fish only tanks and it does a pretty good job. Um, I've even used Aquaforest, which is uh, a brand that Big Al's doesn't carry, but uh, a lot of people were saying, try it just so you have, you know, for yourself yeah. to compare. Because people ask me questions about brands that we don't carry all the time. And you got to stay Yeah, I'm just trying to stay up to date on yeah, yeah, anyway. Yeah. Stay, stay relevant and uh, make sure I know what everybody's up to. Um, and Aquaforest, uh, the one I got was a non-elevated version. So it was similar to the Red Sea Blue Bucket and it worked pretty well. So I, I have nothing bad to say. Tropic Marin's always been a pretty decent salt for me. Um, yeah. I haven't used uh, many others beyond that. Those are like the ones that I have currently the most uh, experience with. Therefore, I'm okay to comment on them. Fair enough. Yes. Cool. Uh, we have another one. Uh, you know, uh, funny enough, my neighbor, Alex, uh, he's he's with us today. He's joining us on the stream. He's excited because we're in our neighborhood. We're having a block party after this. Right. And he says he's going to be uh, he's going to be giving away lemonade. So nice. I'm, so I'm gonna be hitting up that lemonade stand later. You better believe it. I'm Alex. gonna be trying to drive out of this block party. Give yeah. me your toes. Oh yeah, and they say uh, you remind them of Wolverine. I think I think this uh, this don't, fella don't let Thomas see the full moon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This fella's being silly. Yeah. Whatever happened uh, to Tacos for Thomas? We did it. 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 I'll, what stream was it? I'll, I'll try and find it. It was 
two or three streams ago, I yeah. think. I'll, I'll try and I think it might be in the title. Go through. You can go through uh, our, our last streams. We did it. We had a taco cam, so you could actually see the tacos, and and I made you tacos. My wife wasn't around. It was good. My wife was uh, in Mexico. Brian, so Brian himself it. made me tacos. But I've, luckily, I've got the uh, the expertise necessary. And they were all right. Yeah, they were all right. So we they did. We did tacos. Good. Someone also said uh, hashtag donuts for Brian, which we already did. Yep. No more donuts, please. I'm feeling it here. No more donuts for Brian. No more tacos. We'll find something. We have peanuts. Peanuts for persons. Yes. <laughs> to get us through this uh, this uh, variety show. Yes. Uh, all right. So next up, let me see what other question. How big do assassin snails get and how many should I have in my 20-gallon planted? Love from Karachi, Pakistan. Yay! Assassin snails don't get very big at all. Uh, the ones that I have are like not even an inch. And uh, I've got two of them in a 17-gallon. So I think two would probably be, it really depends on how bad your snail problem is. But um, I would start with one. And if your snail population isn't declining in a way that uh, is noticeable after about two weeks, then you could add another one. But I wouldn't go more than two. I think two is enough. Cool. Uh, so yeah, guys, keep putting your questions in because we're going to be doing a, a few different segments of this. We're going to move on and we'll come back to Q&A again later. So uh, any questions you have, hit them in the chat. We're not going in sequence like we normally do for Q&As. We're just kind of cherry picking whatever we see. Uh, so make sure hashtag food for free. Yeah. yeah, that's always good. Yeah, free food is. I'll take great. it, man. Look at me. Yeah, really, you could use it. <laughs> I gotta eat. That's why we have snacks here, so I don't faint in the middle of the stream. Really. Uh, all right. So you know what? With that said, we'll we'll, we'll wait till we get more questions uh, in the chat here. Uh, but I want to move on to. Uh, everyone's, uh, I guess in this show, third favorite segment, one that I know you're a big fan of uh, when we do it. I love it. What did Brian learn this week? I love it. All right, so what did I learn this week? Uh, I'll start off, as I like to do, with a question to you. Okay. What's the best way, if you're in a boat... On the ocean. Okay. And you want to attract... Drink your own pee. I should really wait for the question to finish. You, you nailed it. <laughs> if you're trying to attract a shark, <laughs> what's the best way to attract a shark to your boat? To my boat in your, in your, Yeah, like give me give me like your top, top two, top two or three I'm going to go with splashing okay. at the boat. Sure. And bleeding into the water. Like chum, right? Like throwing yeah. like blood and guts. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that works. It's not a terrible... Well, I mean, actually, it kind of is, but that will come later. <laughs> it turns out one of the best, one of the very effective ways to attract a shark to your boat <laughs> is dropping a speaker in the water and playing he heavy metal music. No way! Heavy... <laughs> This is this is the Discovery Channel figured this out. There's a, there's a bunch of there's a, a guy. What band? What songs are they playing? So there, there's there's a guy and I think it was South Africa or Australia, one of the two, to attract. He was a photographer to attract sharks. He would play ACDC. I love it. Uh, and the Discovery Channel, yeah, they figured out they, they also had this experience where they were uh, dropping heavy metal uh, music into the water and the sharks would come. So uh, <laughs> it turns out sharks love heavy metal music. <laughs> oh my god! I put a lot in these, a lot of work into these graphics. I love sure. these <laughs> graphics, man. So, so sharks love it, love it. So essentially, the idea, the idea with this is uh, they want to start using this method more because so heavy metal music, the the lower, heavier tones of it, uh, simulate like splashing and like a fish struggling. Okay. So to a shark, they they don't hear you know Metallica. They hear struggling fish in the water uh so that sounds it, like a metal track it does yeah yeah right so 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 they the, the sharks are attracted to that and they found that i think there was the discovery channel one where they had um they play and the sharks would come and like kind of rub their heads against the the shark cages okay uh like they were it was some kind of very strange reaction they had to but yeah they they were trying to attract some giant female shark they couldn't find that one but two other Sharks just like wandered over to the cage and were like, "What's going on over here?" Yeah. Uh, so they said this is actually probably the where's the, the party? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they think this is actually probably the better method if if you need to attract a shark for whatever reason. It's better than uh, let's say chum, right? Because chum, like throwing uh, like the fish guts, bones, and blood all into the water. Uh, they found that that's actually could be leading to uh, sharks being. It's like it's like leaving food for bears. You know, like the more you uh, feed them, it attracts them to that spot. Uh, and so um, it, it's, I think in North Carolina, they've had like seven or eight shark attacks 
lately because there's been like certain activity going on where that they've been coming for sharks and so, so instead of giving them the actual food give yeah. them something to investigate and then you mitigate the whole feeding the bears with the park syndrome that's right exactly that so, makes sense yeah Man, so, science so that was kind of neat i thought that was a pretty cool uh, little factoid uh, now so, i just want to write a metal track and see if it can attract sharks and then be like i'll just i'll name it yeah i'll name it uh struggling fishes let's do it i think you should and then what we can put it out and have uh, our viewers listen to it uh yeah it's a it's the uh sharpies models and aquatic says it's the electrical field surrounding the shark cage they sense it yeah uh well there's because the sharks have like the yeah yeah, yeah like and, and they, they can feel the the actual uh, tones and the and the whatnot the fish struggling is what they think it is yeah. so kind of neat thought that was a neat uh very thing. cool and just for good measure because i work so hard on it, i'm gonna play that graphic again ah! What track did you put to it? All right, so enough of that nonsense. So that's what there, there's never going to be enough of that. No, that is just going to be our entry <laughs> yeah, from, into every live stream. On. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yes, uh, that was a pretty cool factor. I thought I'd share that. Love it. Yeah. So uh, with that said, uh, we're just about rounding up to uh, 11, uh, 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Oh wow! Uh, time flies, dude. Time does fly. It's already been an hour, but we're gonna keep going. Let's see. Uh, uh, let's get into more questions now sure. that we've we've learned a bit about sharks. Let's see what other cues people have left for us to a. Um, let's see here. Okay, this is the best fish for beginners. It's a pretty broad question, but best fish for beginners. Let's say freshwater fish, best one for someone never done it before. But a lot of people think goldfish. Goldfish is like... That is not a good beginner fish. No, but that's what a lot of... So let's rule that out yeah, yeah. to so start gold, with. Goldfish isn't great only because to properly keep any goldfish uh, from baby to adulthood, you need a large aquarium and they are very messy. So large filter, your maintenance schedule will be higher. So goldfish are actually not a great beginner fish. Um, what I usually point people to are live bearers for a number of reasons. Uh, they're hardy. Um something like swords or platies or guppies as well. Um, but swords and platies are usually what I throw people towards first. And um, it, they're just hardy. They breed very easily and people tend to really enjoy watching fish reproduce. And, you know, there's just something so feel good about having that happen in your home. And the fact that you're taking good enough care of them that they're like, yeah. hey, let's, uh, let's do more of us. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so yeah, and they come in lots of different colors at this point. So they're just a lot of fun. There's a lot of variety. Um, another fish that I think is absolutely fantastic for beginners are uh, zebra danios. They are incredibly hardy. They are a fun, fast moving fish. They're always moving around. Um, they're very interactive. Uh, they're so used to seeing people all the time and they're, they're very interactive during feeding. You know, They're just an easy uh, fish that kind of does the schooling thing and, and it's a lot of fun for a lot of people, and they mix pretty easily with just about everything else that can, uh, you know, tolerate the same parameters as them. So, yeah, those those were probably my two go-tos for beginner fish. But, yeah, I mean, there's lots. I've had people start off with, like, 75-gallon African cichlid tanks and just do, like, small African cichlids. So, I mean, there's lots of ways to uh, to kind of approach this, but... In general, if we're talking a family getting a 10 gallon or 20 gallon or maybe even 30 gallon starter kit and just wants a few fish to start off, zebra danios, live bearers like platies and uh, sore tails. Cool. Um, I'm looking for some dwarf American cichlids up to six inches max. Any colorful oddballs that you can recommend? Or not off the top of my head. No? I am not an index of South American <laughs> cichlids. Uh, most of the the cichlids that I, I've i kept are not small, not under six inches, over. Um, what I would think of is like a Pistogrammas. They are really cool, but they are also very small. So I don't know if they will fit for you exactly, but look at a Pistos. They are really, really neat little. They're like the, the tiniest peacocks on the planet. And I don't mean peacock cichlids. I mean like peacock the bird. The bird? You see really? <laughs> they have crazy cool fins. Yeah. There's lots of different epistos. Look at epistos. There you go. My answer is epistos. Epistos. Cool. Google that. Uh, Epistogramma I... with two M's. Uh, can I keep a silver arowana in an 800 gallon? Yes. You can keep can I much anything park in my car in my garage? <laughs> 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 yeah, you can keep a silver in an 800. Sure. I mean, that's a lot of tank even for a uh, full-grown silver arowana. 
Sweet. Uh, any idea of a substrate, a good substrate for a treasure chest themed tank? Any creative ideas that you could think of that would go well for a treasure chest themed tank? Mm. There's different ways to approach this. Sure. So, okay. So one way you could look at it is if you're trying to make it look like the ocean, you could pick a white substrate of any sort just so that it appears to be like the sandy bottom, right? Of the ocean. Or maybe if you could find a yellowish substrate, you could pretend like it is sitting in a pile of coins. Oh, like the yeah, treasure chest yeah. is atop a mountain of coins, which only makes you wonder if there are coins literally everywhere. What is in that locked treasure chest <laughs> that is so much more important than those coins? Those are two ideas. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, next up. Uh, what other questions do we have here? We have... Uh, uh, let me see here. pH and hardness for tiger barbs. I hear opposite things in different places. Do I see any other... They are not finicky fish when it comes to things like that. So. No? Uh, the range is probably wider than you think it is. So that's probably why you hear a lot of conflicting information. But long story short, a lot of these fish are bred in captivity now, and they are used to what most municipalities have in terms of tap water, which is close to neutral for pH and relatively hard water. So they'll be fine. They'll be all right. Cool, cool, cool. Don't worry too much about uh, tiger barbs. Uh, are the laws for fish keeping good in Canada? Uh, here in Sweden, we have laws like no ball tanks. One side has to have a background, like minimum tank size for fishes and so on. Does Canada, does Canada have laws about that, to your knowledge? Okay, so here's the thing. Some of those laws don't really make a lot of sense. Like, a back, one of the panels has to have a background. Why? If there's enough structure in the tank, it doesn't yeah. matter. Um, but no, Canada doesn't have a lot of these laws. Um, I would say that countries like Sweden and stuff that are starting to put more laws on fish keeping and how you have to go about it is not a bad thing necessarily because unfortunately for years and years and years and to this very day, fish are almost considered to be a disposable pet, which is insanely unfortunate and very, 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 uh, it's just plainly wrong. Yeah. No pet is disposable. No pet should ever be bought on a whim. Um, and when you purchase fish to put in your aquarium you should always see the value of their life not just the, the dollar tag you paid for them right they are more than just the sum of money um so they should all be important to you and you should always do your best to give them everything they need to survive their entire lifespan um but no canada has not caught up with uh any sort of laws in terms of keeping fish I'm like minimal sure, care requirements yeah that just hasn't happened yet um there are some generalized laws for keeping pets uh, that have to do with animal cruelty. Like, so animal cruelty laws, obviously you can face charges for, uh, you know, potentially being reported for hoarding aquariums and all of them look like garbage and there are dead fish in half of them, so on and so forth. You will, there are laws that will protect the animals in that sense, but there are no minimum requirement laws that I've seen uh, personally. So uh, I would like to see something in the future, uh, nothing super, uh, s you know, stringent, so to speak, but things that are, you know, just plainly required. Yeah. So common sense things that. Yeah. yeah. Just so people don't go putting goldfish in bowls at the fair and have you throw ping pong balls at them. Yeah. It's yeah. In the same way, I disagree with the rattlesnake roundup, which I'm not even going to touch, but Sorry if you like that. Moving on. We'll, also, we'll do a few more questions and we'll move uh, back into some sure. React. And we have, we have a product feature that we yeah. do want to get to at some point. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll give you some time to be able to unbox a, a certain product and show off some features of yep. it. Uh, so uh, again, guys, uh, for those of you joining us, uh, hit that like button. We would really, really appreciate that. Uh, we'd, we are going to be around here for another little while doing more Q&A, doing more uh, React, doing the, uh, the product feature. So hit that like button and uh, share this with as many people. And let's make this uh, an even bigger party than it is. Um, with that said, what should we move on to? I guess we'll move on to the React. Like I said, all right, let me play that. I don't want to waste this graphic, so I'm going to use it. Thomas Reacts. Okay, so our next uh, reaction, our next uh, video, uh, photo for reaction is from uh, Wakas. 
I'm gonna, I think his name is Wakas. Wakas. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll throw it up for the viewers, and then I'll get it on the screen for you there, uh, Thomas. All righty. So this is from Wakas, uh, and he's got a few photos here. I'm going to show you because he wanted to show the tank and then some of his gear. Sweet. Uh, so this is from Wakas. Let me, oh, of course, I've, have I lost my place? No. Okay, so he says, uh, hi, Thomas. My name is Wakas. I'm from Pakistan. Started with fish keeping a few months back after watching um, The King of DIY for years. Great guy. We nice. love him. Yeah. Uh, I love your live shows. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm attaching a bunch of pictures, um, including the hang on back canister filter that he has. So we'll show those as well. Uh, this is a 20 gallon, 75 liter tank and currently holds one tin foil barb. Barb or bard? It says barb. Barb. But I think it's supposed to be barb. 12 tiger barbs and six African cichlids. I know I have overstocked the tank, but I'm looking forward to. Have my, you ever? But I know, but I, uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to my new house that's being built a few months away, and the big and the big 90 to 120 gallon tank. Brilliant. Uh, that I've planned. I need to paint the background black, uh, which you love, black background, uh, but uh, I've not been able to so far. Filter is something I'm proud of. It's not available locally, and I had to order it from China. Nice. Uh, it's a canister hang on the back, and I have one kilogram of Eheim Substrat Pro. Brilliant. And the same amount of GAE Bio Balls in it. Brilliant. It has been doing a great job. Thank you for making uh, these fun. Oh, thank you for, for sending us in and for joining us. So that's his... Uh, we'll do the aquarium first, then I'll show you the uh, the filter. For sure. Um, first off... I dig your uh, hardscape. Uh, you've definitely got uh, something nice going on with that piece of driftwood on the one side of the tank. I think it's uh, sized very appropriately for, for the aquarium and where you've got it situated. Gives the fish a, a hard structure to kind of group around, which is evident in the photo they use it. You can kind of see all the fish are sort yeah. of, you Humping know, stuck it, to, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's very normal. So uh, I love it. Uh, tiger barbs all look really happy and healthy. All of the fish are looking pretty good. Yeah, you're way overstocked. Like way <laughs> overstocked. The Africans are babies. The tinfoil is still a baby. They're all going to get way too big for this tank. And how, like he says he's moving to a new house in a couple months. Let's say two to three months. It's Did he has time? No. Oh. You, know, you know, you should, oh. they should be in a bigger tank already. All Especially right. like the tinfoil barb. That's, they grow relatively quickly. Uh, the Africans, maybe it'll be okay for a little bit. Um, the other thing is they come from uh, fairly different parameters. So it's a, a kind of eclectic group of fish. Oh, I see. But uh, that said, I think uh, aiming for a 120 gallon tank would probably be your best bet. Even that tinfoil barb at full size, 120 gallons is not a ton of water for it. Um, not a ton of space in general. So uh, maybe aim for like a five foot 120. Um, rather than the standard, I think the standard 120 is 48 by... 48 by 24 by 24, I think. Whereas a five foot is uh, 60 by 18 by 24, I think. But yeah. Um, your filter sounds like it's uh, got a good amount of biomedia yeah, stuff let's, in it. Yeah, let's show the filter. Uh, we have a couple photos yeah, of it show here. Yeah, me, show me, show me. Uh, so that's his filter. I'll show you on the big screen here. Uh, so that's the filter itself. Yeah, so that's the internal portion of it. Uh, and then he sent um, he sent uh, this photo as well. Yeah, there you the go. Actual, uh... So I'm I'm really glad to see you focused very heavily on biomedia uh, and your you know he uh, it looks like you're filtering the tank pretty heavily for its size, which is super important because you have a ton of fish in there. I'm glad you you already have plans to upgrade. Otherwise, I would have um, urged you, you know, a lot harder to to consider doing that. But yeah, I mean. It's, it's sometimes nice to get baby fish to start off, have them in a smaller tank while you prepare the larger system for them. That way you're kind of raising them yourself, you know. You're not just getting big show fish and sticking them in a tank right. and being like, look at the fish I bought. This way you kind of have, uh, you know, you're more attached to them. They're, it's more personal to you. You've raised them yourself. You you There's a lot more pride. So I feel you on that, 100%. But yeah. That's a very overstocked tank. Make sure you stay uh, on the up and up with water changes and they'll be all right. But I'd be concerned with two months that you might start to get some stunting in terms of growth, especially with that tinfoil barb. So make sure it's no longer than, than two months if you can avoid it. All righty. Uh, well, thanks so much for sending it in. Nonetheless, we appreciate it. Uh, hopefully you've sorted that out. And thank you so much for watching. Yeah, as always, yeah. Uh, so next up we have uh, Jarno. So let me just uh, find his email here and uh, see if he actually sent any, any kind of. Uh, oh, he did. Yeah, he sent a write up with this. So Sweet. let me show it to our lovely viewers here. 
And then for Ooh. you, my friend. Ooh. I like you. So he says, uh, hello, my favorite YouTube channel. Uh, <laughs> hey, thank you. Thank hello. You. Uh, I'm Jono from the cold Netherlands. Netherlands! And I want to show you my creation of my 150 liter tank. Some notes. The filter on the left is just temporary. Uh, yeah, yeah. And is going to leave the tank the next couple of days. It's just there for bacteria inside the filter. Beautiful. The tank is home to two pairs of microgeophagus, Rem Ramirezi, Rem Rem Ramirezi? Uh, sure. Electric blue and wild color, five Corridoras, and a trio of histogramma. Uh, you can read that one. Cockatooides? Sure. Cockatooides. <laughs> you nailed it. Cockatooides? Yeah, yeah, I think it was pretty Maybe good. they're cockatoo? Like as in the, like the, the bird? The bird? Yeah, I yeah. hope not. I hope not. <laughs> somewhere hidden in a hole and there's a group of five crystal red shrimps, but they are also hidden in the woods somewhere. Yes. Hope you like my tank and wanted to thank you so much for all the information and inspiration. Um, keep up the good work. Greetings, Jarno from the Netherlands. Well, Jarno, thank you. Thank you so, so much. Um, your tank looks awesome. Uh, I like the driftwood. Really, really cool, interesting pieces of driftwood. I like that they're holy. They look like a Malaysian driftwood, perhaps. Your plants look super healthy. Uh, you've got some nice color in what well, it looks like Ludwigia, red Ludwigia, nice and red at the top. You've got a purple plant in the back of there. I'm assuming that everything's been in here for a little bit. Um, your purple plants are still purple. Your swords are looking happy. I don't see any algae anywhere. Uh, yeah, looking good so far. I'm really digging it. It's a really, really nice kind of group of plants you've picked out too. I love that you've got like the mossier, fernier plants at the base of the driftwood and attached yeah. to the driftwood and then uh, grassier plants kind of meeting the marginal lines of the driftwood as well. And then you've got some uh, some other plants just kind of spackled about in, in places that make sense. Like the background plants are in the background. It looks like you got some Anubias perhaps, or not Anubias. Um, uh, my brain is already melting. It's only been an hour. Um, Vals in the background potentially vowels, uh, maybe Kabamba or something back there too. I like it. Yeah, it looks really, really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fish look good. Happy and healthy. I like the light blue background. I don't know if that's actually a background or if that's just your wall behind the, the tank. Wall, you yeah, yeah, I see a cord. Yeah. yeah, no, it, it actually really works. It's nice. It adds uh, like a lightness to it. It's very sky-esque. Yeah. I dig it. No, it's a great little tank. John. Yeah, so you can see they, the, they've they got a, in the top right-hand corner, there's a spray bar probably from a canister yeah, filter. Yeah, so right. the internal filter is probably in there because it was in another tank full of bacteria sure. and stuff, and they're using that for the biological. So this tank must be fairly new. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's really nice. Yeah, thanks, good work. Journal. Appreciate that. All right, we got one more, and then we'll get into our product feature. Sounds, Sounds good? good. All right, let's see what uh, let's see what our people are saying. Oh, Alex the studio. Oh, Al that's my neighbor, Alex. Thanks, Alex. Dude! Now I'm going to take that $2 and come buy some lemonade. Although yeah. he, he asked earlier if iced tea was okay, and I, all I can say is absolutely not. I want my lemonade, Alex. You <laughs> promised. Uh. No, thanks for that. That's awesome, Alex. That's really awesome, man. Uh, thank you guys, everyone, for being here supporting us, hitting that like button. Uh, we do appreciate that. Uh, so let's move on to our very last React. Let's do it. And then we can jump into uh, jump into our product feature. Sounds good. Oh, I almost put that web, the, our webcam on. No thanks. Ooh. Okay, this one is from Jamie. That looks great, and I'll let you see it maybe too. Uh, that would be awesome. Okay. Uh, there we are. Nice. Uh, so Jamie says, Sweet. Uh, here's my 29-gallon Aquascape. Nice. Uh, it's a low-tech, non-CO2 tank. Yes. I dose with Thrive S three times a week. Nice. Uh, the light is an Asta 120 pendant light. I have a carpet of Monte Carlo, dwarf hair grass, and dwarf clover. There are small crypt flamingos, crypt wenti, and brown crypts all along the, uh, along the hardscape as well. The background is H. Tripartia spelling. I don't know. I can't even pronounce it. Hydrocaudal, probably, of some sort. I don't know. She was like spelling. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. I can't even pronounce it. Red Val and Jungle Val. Along the right side, I've got large Anubius, Beautiful Andrew, maybe? Ted Mangrove, and some kind of sword growing at the top. The hardscape is Dragonstone and one gigantic piece of Malaysian driftwood that spent the last eight years in my mom's garage. The hardscape plants are uh, Bul Bulbitis, Bulbitis? Uh, Narrow, Leaf Anubi Lair Narrow Leaf Anubius, and a small... Boos on the Dragonstone. Buse. Buse of Philandra. Okay, great. I, I saw it right away because I love that plant. Anyways. On, on the Driftwood, I've got Christmas Moss, Java Fern, Monte Carlo, Baby Tears, and more Buse. 
For livestock, I've got lots of platies and guppies, two autos, one honey gourami, one koi betta, two Siamese algae eaters, finding a new home for them, some cherry shrimp, Malaysian trumpet snails, bladder snails, red ram's horn snails, and one very happy assassin snail. Keep up the good work. Can't wait to see uh, how the skate looks when it's done. Have a great day. I dig your tank. That looks good. I love, uh, one thing I, I, I actually really like, um, I really like it when people use marginal plants or plants that can have their roots or some of their, their body completely submersed. And you can see it sticking out at the top of the tank there. I've always found that really, really nice. It kind of uh, merges the aquarium with the rest of the house in a way that just, I don't know, just makes it makes it feel like the life is pouring out of the aquarium, not just inside of it. Let me show people. I've, I've, I've cropped it here, but let me see if I can yeah. show people the, that should work. Yeah, people should be able to see now. There, the yeah, you can see on the, the right top. side, the plant sticking right at the top. All the plants look super happy and healthy. For a low-tech system, this is probably super easy to take care of. Um, not to say that you haven't put a lot of hard work into it and don't do maintenance, but just uh, like even with my low tech tank, like I really have to ne neglect it, like really neglect it for it to get out of whack because you find this harmony with it and it just kind of like just maintains itself so, so well and so easily. And this tank just looks phenomenal. The light reminds me, I know it was some other weird name, but it reminds me of a Kessel. Um, and it's got that really nice wide blanket of light. It looks very much like the sun. It doesn't feel like a fluorescent, like you still have lots of uh, shadows in the tank, but mm. in very appropriate places. And it just adds this depth and dimension to everything you're looking at that is it's hard to replicate without using LED um, and like a pendant style LED. Right. Very, very cool. I like it a lot. I like it a lot, a lot, a lot. It's very nice. Very, very nice. Yeah, thanks, Jamie. Good job, man. Appreciate appreciate you guys awesome. sending that in. Uh, so that, that about does it for our React, for oh. our first ever variety show. Uh, I think we should uh, soon get into this product feature to make sure, sure. we have enough time. Uh, let's just have a look and see what some of our uh, chat's saying here. Uh, just a bunch of people asking questions. Um, awesome. All right, well, you guys, we are going to uh, jump into this product feature. Um, I know you brought something very special. Are you? Do you feel ready to go? I'm always ready. Then buddy. let me play this fancy pants graphic that I made for it. <laughs> All right, man. So, what did you bring for us today? None other than the Red Sea Reef LED ninety. Ooh. A little bit of unbox therapy. Cool. Awesome. So uh, if you guys haven't ever heard of Red Sea, it's because you live under a rock. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so the the Red Sea Reef LED 90, I think is Red Sea's first foray into reef aquarium lighting. Yeah. So up until this point with their reef systems, they've basically, with the exception of, I guess, their T5s, they've been harnessing um, LEDs from uh, other brands to utilize on their tanks. They decided that they were going to go off and engineer something of their very own. Um, I've done a bunch of reading up on this tank, or this tank, this uh, aquarium light. They do really awesome tanks, which is why I just can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> so, but they did a lot of research before they built this. And uh, one of the things that they really wanted to focus on um, is essentially making reef LED lighting very, very easy to use with minimal effort uh, and minimal um, chances of you screwing it up and frying your corals in one way or another. So a lot of uh, LEDs out there for a very long time now have focused and almost been fixated on this idea of absolute control. Uh, and control is all well and good, unless you have no idea what the heck you're doing, in which case you have, uh, you know, you can't just get into a helicopter. <laughs> As somebody who doesn't fly helicopters or had any formal <laughs> you, you, training. You can, but it won't go well. <laughs> no, it's not going to go well. And expect to fly the darn thing properly, right? So same idea, like reef lighting, unless you have a very, very healthy understanding of um, uh, lighting in general, uh, and then corals and photosynthesis specifically in corals, um, <laughs> you're going to have a very hard time trying to adjust a light to you know suit those corals needs and get it right um that's why you know lights like ecotech marine and ai and stuff who have all that control also have settings uh and presets yep. that you can just use and then change the intensity on mm -hmm. right um but they still give you way too much control and 
usually when you give somebody too many things to play with, things go wrong. They play with them because people like custom, but sometimes custom is not good. Um, so what what Red Sea's done is they still have controllability with their lights uh, via an app, and uh, they still give you uh, channels that you can play with and dial in the look of the light. But what they've really done is they've made a light that you cannot set. No matter how you set this light up, you, you will have a very hard time hurting your corals. And if you start to put the light into a suboptimal setting, you actually get a warning through the app, if I if I understand correctly, telling you that you've oh awesome you've gone outside of what is probably the safe zone for most corals. So uh, kudos to Red Sea on their their um, basically method of creating this light and all the research they've put in and what they've aimed to do with this light fixture. As as somebody uh, like myself who you know really works on helping to educate people and and have success with their aquariums, seeing a product like this makes me very happy because people are more likely to have success with something like this than they are with something that is you know not really designed with uh, you know uh, the customers uh, sometimes lack of knowledge being taken into account uh, so let's get the plastic off this thing I've just so you know I've had this and the other ones that match it for a while now and they've just been sitting there while Brian and I were you know, getting ready to start filming a series that is now on hold. hold. So I'm going to <coughs> open this up and get this out of my system. I've been dying to open these lights up. Yeah, and I've got a little uh, special webcam here uh, that I'm going to try and use to, uh, to help you guys see better. So let's get the plastic wrap off of this bad boy. Whoa, whoa, there we go. Now we got a better look at it, right? And on the top there, you can see the channels. I think it's two channels, the Reef Spec Blue, 80 watt, the uh, 8000K white, and the Red Sea recommended setting of blue 100%, white 50% at 85 watts output, 20,000 Kelvin. Uh, pretty impressive looking uh, blend. You can see multiple peaks in the blue uh, side of things which is really nice to see. Uh, just so you know, corals really only photosynthesize uh, using the blue end of the spectrum. They really don't use much of anything else uh, just based on how light and water interact with uh, one another. Reds get filtered out very, very quickly. Um, so blue is usually what makes it deep into the ocean, which is why the ocean is blue. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with those uh, little charts there. Um, obviously I'm gonna be really happy to see this thing on a tank one of these days but let's get this open and have a look inside Ooh. and uh it says reef spec guarantee reef spec which is red sea's uh thing they like to call things reef spec which means that they've made it specifically for reef keeping uh to deal with uh you know the harsh environment of a saltwater aquarium as well as doing all the necessary things for corals to thrive and other reef invertebrates. So we've got a little booklet here that's going to tell us probably how to use the light and what we're looking at. I'm not going to read it. I'm usually pretty good at this stuff. <laughs> Watch me screw this up now. Yeah. So, wow, that's actually so much smaller than I was expecting. So let's uh, get some cords out of here. Let's start with the power cord. We've got a brick here, nice big power brick, Red Sea stamp on it. It's a nice OEM brick. Hopefully that means it's gonna last a nice long time. It's not just some random off the shelf brick. And let's get the light out of here. Ooh, come on, I don't wanna pull on that too hard. Oh, there we go. All right, nice firm. Wow, that's got some weight to it. Lights sometimes, you know, are deceivingly light. Ha! <laughs> but uh, this has actually got some weight to it. And I think it's because it's got this really large heat sink on the top. Uh, which is a good thing, believe it or not. Um, you know, sometimes the form factor of a light will help the light work better because if you can dissipate the heat from the LEDs efficiently, you can drive them for a longer period of time. Uh, basically, they last longer. You don't want them to overheat. It's not a good thing. So lots of heat sink on this, lots of weight to it. Like it's, it's got weight. Ah, Red Sea Seahorse right on the top here. Love that. Very cute here. I'll flip it around. Nice. So the fan's right on the top, which makes sense, nestled right in the center of the uh, cooling fins here on the heat sink. And the um, LEDs themselves, you can see, are recessed, right? So they're kind of like in this divot. 
And that is to help prevent you from uh, looking at the light and you know, having it glaring into your eyes, which is really nice to have a shroud like that. Not a lot of lights have any sort of a shroud, so you end up seeing it. And we've got a very dome-like, uh, you can see this, it's like a dome, uh, lens over top of this uh, arrangement of diodes, which I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but they look kind of like a, a bunch of rainbows. They reflect light in a very interesting way which I haven't really seen before, but those are all gonna be variations of blue and UV, I assume. They, there doesn't seem to be any sort of real phosphor coating on them like there is on the strip in the center. So that strip in the center there would be your whites. Your white channel is gonna be that strip and everything around it is blue. So you can see how heavily it's weighted in the blues. Man, that's, that's really, really cool. I haven't seen a, an arrangement like that before. And I'm really curious to see how this thing is going to work. Oh, should I plug it in, Brian? Yeah, let's go for is it. Is there a way to plug it in? Uh, yeah, we have a power bar over here. Let's 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 plug this thing in and go blind. All right, I'm just going to take this little twisty tie off here. I love the footprint of the light. It's really, really nice and small. Uh, it would probably do a great job, especially because you can control the intensity, right? It would probably do a great job on anything like 20 gallons and up. Um, and then obviously the more uh, lights you have, the larger of an aquarium it can effectively work on. Here you go, my friend. All right, I shall plug oh. this in. You, you camera it up. All right. Let's, uh, let's, let's see what happens here. I'm gonna just... We got juice. We got juice. All right. Eh. Yeah, not that a great view. There we go. All right, let's uh, let's go blind. Ugh. Oh, let's see what it says. Got power? Oh, maybe I have to sync it with the app. Well, we shall do that. I shall. All right. In the meantime, let me switch back to our. So I'm gonna theme. find the app here and. Play with this light. Has anyone ever used this light before? Anyone in the chat? Let us know if you've if you've got this sucker. Like it's it's available now for everyone, right? It's something that's out yeah. there on the market. Anyone? And it's the reef before? the reef beat app, which uh. I'm I'm downloading at this moment. So that's Red Sea's app to control all this stuff. Looks like it's going to be pretty slick. Sweet. And Brian's got the best of internet. So I do. I have to. So you got the reef beat app opening up here. Yep. Sweet. Welcome to ReefBeat. Control all of your Red Sea devices in one place. Get started. Sign up. Switch to that guy. Allow. Ooh, I'm going to put my email address in here so you're not. Oh, gonna okay. We're not, me, gonna, me, we're not going to watch that part. Yeah. We don't want Otherwise, to, I'm going to get inundated with React photos. React you guys photos, are going to send exactly. all your React photos to him and <laughs> not to me. And then he's going to see them all before he can react to them. And that's not fun. Uh, okay, let's see. Almost done. Brian is super handsome at live. Oh, yeah. He likes me. Let's have another look at this guy. There we go. All good, big guy. Pretty neat. So you've never used this before or seen this before? I, I haven't. This is the first time. Awesome. Enter aquarium name. Thomas, Thomas reacts to new light. Very cool. Wow. What's that? Well, they so in we can we can look at this now. Right. So you can pick your measuring units, select the system type, like whether it's uh, SPS dominant mixed reef. I'm going to select mixed reef for now because that's what it's going to be going on. Aquarium brand, it's a reefer that we'll be putting it on eventually. Oh, ho, ho. oh, I don't know the serial number. I don't have that with me, so let's not even worry about that. What time is it here? It's uh, Atlantic time, yeah? Oh, yeah, it is, yeah. Where is that in this list? Atlantic time. Sure, why not daylight savings? Oh, never mind. Forget that. I'll just leave it like that. Hey. What's wrong with my aquarium name? 
So there's uh, obviously some setup for this required. But yeah, yeah. Well, this is the first time I've yeah. done the app, right? So uh, it wants me to enter a serial number of the light. Let's do that. Aquarium serial number. Yeah, good luck. I don't know that. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. There we go. Fingers crossed that this works. Yeah, well, done. Offline. Yes, I am connected, but let's do this offline. Oh, exciting. I see things happening. Connect devices. So, let's have a look see. Make sure the device is connected to power. Press the button on the device for five seconds. Two, three, four, blank. Now it's blinking. Wait for the light to blank. Choose the device from the list. Yes, connect. Guys are experiencing the uh, red sea light right along with me. They're talking to each other, I think. The seahorse is like throwing little waves yeah. at the other guy. Well, I don't want to hook it up to your... Ah, uh, whatever. Well, we'll figure out the rest later. Brian? Yeah, you I'll do that it up. You show off some cool stuff. Ooh. I can't wait to go blind in mere moments. <laughs> there we go, connecting. All right. Yeah. I mean, this is relatively easy. I don't know how many of you out there have uh, connected your own um, devices before through Wi-Fi and stuff, but... It can take a minute. Yeah, yeah. But we're getting there. This is actually pretty straightforward. I've had some that were... Nine Whoa! Oh! <laughs> All right. We're rolling. Yep, that's uh, that's a light. Please name your device. Uh, I'm just going to leave the name it's currently got for now. I can rename it later. So, like, even to start off, they give you some pretty straightforward stuff to work with here. So like right in the app, you can pick 15,000 K, which is what it sets you right now, 20,000 K, and you can see it changing behind the phone in real time, 23,000 K. That's really cool. I'm gonna leave it on 20 K for now. Select that. Set your sunrise. Sure, 8 a.m. sounds good. I'm not even gonna bother changing it. Firmware update, we'll update that later. But there, there I can is. see the, there's the schedule that's currently set. Shows you where you are in the schedule. The uh, moonlight is 0%, whites are 50, blues that are 100. Uh, acclimation, lunar cycle you can set, staggered sunrise. That's if you have multiple LEDs, you can kind of set them to come on um, individually over a period of time. So one will come on before the one beside it right. and so on and so forth. So it'll create like this little cascade over the tank of light. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty sweet. I'm really excited, but you see what I mean? Like, there isn't too many things going on in here, so good luck screwing it up, which I think is super important because oh, it's really sure. easy to mess this kind of stuff up. So even though it seems straightforward, the light is casting in a very super, super wide. So if you can see on the table here, I'm, I'm like, I don't know, five inches off the table, and the ring is like 24 inches. So. Yeah. Just bringing it up, it's just covering the whole table. I'm like two feet off the table and it's all over the floor even now. So it's a nice widespread light. You're gonna be able to keep it relatively close to the tank. It's gonna throw light in all kinds of directions. I'm really, honestly, really, really stoked to give this a shot on a tank. I've been dying to unbox this. All right, well, let's, uh, let's unplug it. Awesome. And stop going blind. Yeah, Lord, whoa. Man, that's fun. Yeah, it's going to be fun getting it on top of a, an aquarium there, man. Yeah, I'm stoked. So, yeah, guys, if you're looking for or are in the market for a uh, reef LED light fixture, I would, oh, at this point, I would recommend having a look at this light. It's definitely, uh, just based on what I've seen so far, definitely worth it. I'm sure corals look great under it. Uh, I wish I could have had corals under it already. But... Seems awesome. Super cool. What's the full name of the light? It is the Red Sea Reef LED 90. Ooh. All right, I'm going to link that up for you guys. I'm going to try anyway. I don't know if uh, they're in stock yet or not. 
No? Uh, I'm not sure. Doesn't, doesn't look this like it. This is super, super, uh, super, super new. Okay, yeah, well, hopefully we'll be able to get these uh, up for you guys soon. But super cool pro uh, product and something for you guys to uh, watch uh, closely as we set it up on a reefer once Thomas' oh, basement is back uh, so back excited. in action. We're going to get that guy up and running and uh, so kind of see how the it works. The box is nice. That's nice. It hey, when, feels when, so premium. When, when, packaging, when packaging is like so yeah. perfect like that, you just it's such a nice experience to it, take it out of the box. and. It is. It's its a very premium feeling like yeah. in all ways. Cool. Awesome. I will say it's not like the slickest looking of the lights. I think the Akamai KPS, or, uh, LRM and LRS are yep. still, for in terms of looks, Sleek. the yeah. slickest LED lights I've yeah, ever seen. Yeah, they're really nice. But I'm really digging this. For, for I'm digging the philosophy functionality of it, and the yeah. functionality, everything. Like I'm, I'm excited. Awesome. So keep your eyes peeled for for that. We're gonna put that on a future build for all you guys to see how it works in action, not just on my foldable table. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just gonna hold it. Just hug that's it. That's cool. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Sit right there for a minute. While we finish this up. All right, guys. So uh, we have uh, a little bit of time left, not a whole sure. lot. Uh, I think we we got a, a ton more questions that have come in uh, in the meantime. So let's do them. Let's finish uh, it off with. Uh, let's finish it off with a little bit of uh, uh, Q and A. Q and A. Q and A. All right, so let's see what we have uh, waiting for us in the chat here. My tea's perfect. Oh, good. It only took an hour and 40 minutes, but it's <laughs> Jeez, good to go. These tumblers. They're great. Yeah, they're, Contigo. They're, they're Keeping awesome. your tea hot for way too long. You know what contigo means? What? In Spanish? What? With you. Really? Yeah. It would be with me. <laughs> if I could drink out of it. <laughs> Wife and I are setting up our first tank. Sweet. 20 gallon hexagon, 24 inches tall. Oh yeah. Low tech planted with three black widow tetras, six guppies and two small catfish. Cool. Bought all our gear at Big Al's. Oh, that's nice. Cool. Uh, your thoughts? Tom, uh, hashtag Thomas Trainees. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, awesome. Love it. Um, so uh, the thoughts that I have, um, whenever you're dealing with column tanks or tanks that are basically like a tall version of a tank that's thin uh you really want to try to use plants that are either not going to get super super wide because you don't have a lot of footprint to work with but will definitely get tall um so i think things like brought it up like a billion times but ludwigia good stem plant very easy to keep uh, I would probably put Ludwigia in there as a mid-ground plant. Behind that, I would look at jungle valves. They get in insanely tall very quickly, uh, and they're very, very easy to keep. So they're a really, really good background plant uh, to fill up any background space behind your Ludwigia. Uh, they don't grow wide very much. It's very much just an upright plant. So the number of them you get is really going to dictate um, the width of the plant back there. It will take forever for them to actually get bushier in any kind of way. Uh, Anubias for for uh, a filler plant works really, really well. Nana and Nana Petite are probably my favorites, although Barteri and Coffifolia are also really, really nice. They're just a larger leaf plant, so depending on what you want to do there. And something really, really cool as a foreground plant, which isn't truly a foreground plant, I'm going to say it's a mid-ground to foreground, um, that might be fun because it, it will do something completely different than the rest of the plants, is uh, a lotus. And... Um, the lotus uh, leaves basically start on the bulb and they shoot straight up to the surface and are like lily pads. So they're gonna block out a bunch of light that gets down to the, uh, to the floor of the aquarium. So it creates this really nice kind of subdued dim lighting at the very bottom of the tank where your Anubias and stuff are who aren't gonna mind. And uh, they give this really nice, just like straight, pin straight a lot of the time um, stems that just go straight up for the fish to kind of hide in and between and swim in between. And when you've got a column tank, it can look really, really interesting to just have those uh, shooting yeah. straight up and then those reddish leaves at the top. So you can use a relatively high powered light, let's say, um, and still have low tech plants in the uh, rest of the tank. Uh, because those larger um, lotus leaves at the top are going to be blocking out the light for them. They're going to be appreciating it. They've got the atmospheric CO2 at the top of the tank, so you don't need to give them CO2 or anything like that, and they can take that extra light and enjoy it and grow. And yeah, that can be fun. And then any new leaves that start on the bulb uh, will, you know, start underwater, will kind of make up these little steps as they grow oh, cool. towards the surface. It can be a lot of fun. But yeah. 
I'm really glad you guys got a tank and you're you're having some fun with it. Please send it into the React series. We don't, we, we don't see, see a lot of column tanks. They wouldn't see a lot of that Columns style. Are, okay, so in terms of style, column tanks were a lot more popular many years, like 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, just the form factor was a lot easier for people to envision in their houses because you could shove it into a corner. Right, or okay, like that, yeah, right? yeah. It was less intrusive, but the volume of water was greater. Sure. So, um, but the thing is, you can't put large fish. Like, if you have a 60 gallon column versus a 60 gallon standard, the f- the actual footprint yeah. of a 60 gallon standard is so much greater, and you get a larger fish in it than you could have in that column. So, column tanks. Um, have a very interesting form factor, very interesting to look at, different uh, um, for, for aquascaping even. It's, it can be more challenging in some ways, but lend themselves uh, really nicely to uh, certain styles, like even those tall growing plants, right? Um, but the thing is, people usually prefer to make the most out of their, their volume in terms of floor space so that you can have the most fish possible right. versus... Uh, or the largest fish possible versus just, you know, having a weird form factor. So that's why I think uh, those more squat breeder style aquariums are have now like, become more the norm. Exactly. And, yeah, fair enough. For aquascaping and stuff, they are yeah. very much more the norm. But I think there is still uh, definitely room in the uh, universe for those column tanks of various like octagonal column tanks. Yeah. And, uh, even diamond shaped tanks that go into the corner of a room. They can be really cool. Uh, hi, from Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. Hello. Uh, what are some easy and affordable corals that are good with consuming nitrates from water and are ideal for beginners? Pick your soft coral. <coughs> uh, leather corals of all kinds are very, very easy. The only ones I would probably stay away from uh, are Fiji yellow leathers. They can be a little bit finicky, but um, you, you know, any toadstool leather is going to be relatively forgiving. Uh, cabbage corals, which are a type of leather, are pretty forgiving. Um, Xenia can be hit and miss, so I would actually recommend against it. Uh, Zoanthids are really, really easy to care for. Um, I would stay away from the higher end, fancier Palithoas, uh, just because it's a lot of money for a very small polyp, and some of them are prone to melting, like hallucinations. Uh, some of them, some of you out there might know what I'm talking about when I say hallucinations in terms of Palithoa. Uh, I call them hallucinations, and I think it's a great name because you could have bought them but you will soon realize it was only a hallucination <laughs> because they'll have melted away at some point and you'll be like, what happened to my $200 or whatever the hell you paid for it? It is gone. <laughs> I hallucinated the whole thing. It uh, lost $200. Yeah, but like uh, radioactive dragon eyes, uh, these are all just silly um, names that people have come up with for these various color morphs of uh, zoanthid but watermelons um all very very basic easy to keep uh and and do a pretty good job um just you know making a nice blanket in the aquarium but for nitrates uh colt corals nephthia uh yeah like leather corals you could do a soft coral aquarium and never have a nitrate issue. The The only issue of nitrates I've had in soft coral aquariums are I've had not enough nitrates. <laughs> <laughs> you got to feed your fish more because the corals just suck it out. Anyways, hopefully that answers your question. Fingers crossed. All right, next up, uh, I'm preparing one a 100-gallon uh, tank for fancy goldfish. Cool. Is, is a Fluval FX6 sufficient or do I need to get another canister filter? I think an FX6 on a 100-gallon tank for goldfish is going to be a great filter. Just make sure you beef up the biological a bit on it. Uh, I hear they're just giant sponge filters. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of sponge on those, so you're going to want to clean those out relatively often with the goldfish because they're very gunky, messy fish. Uh, you'll probably find that those sponges carry a lot of dirt in them. Um, you don't need to go crazy rinsing them in tap water, though. They do serve some biological function as well, so you can just uh, you know, get a bucket a five gallon bucket of water from the aquarium and take those sponges out and squeeze them off and dislodge all the debris and just stick them right back in the canister most times and then once in a while you know you're going to give them a really good rinse under tap water or something but uh no that's a great filter it's awesome. it, it is it's a good filter all right uh step up the biological put like eheim substrat pro in it or something or Seachem matrix there you go here's a very interesting question i sure. love this one uh i just got a job working at my local fish store do you have any suggestions on how to relay enough information to get uh customers uh the help they need but also not too much information that it scares them away from the hobby that's a good question oh 
Do I do this? I don't know. Um, okay, so <laughs> here's or the give thing. Too much information? I think it's really important to be honest with people enough so that they can make their own educated decision on whether or not aquarium keeping is right for them. Because you also don't want to get somebody into the hobby who shouldn't be in it, so to speak. And um, then them end up just coming out of it and then having ill will towards it because they either had a feeling that it was a bad idea and they felt like they were talked into it. You don't want to talk people into doing something they don't want to do. Right. Never do that. Uh, at the end of the day, you got to remember, we're dealing with pets here. You don't want to push something onto somebody that they're not going to end up keeping, you know, long term. So you want to give that person or persons all the information that they're going to need to keep an aquarium going, but not give them all of the finite details of it right so you can explain that every two weeks they're going to need to do a water change but when people hear water change they're going to think oh do i have to change all the water like questions just keep forming so instead of saying it that plainly which is true uh you don't want to go into crazy detail like tell them you're going to need this and going to need this and going to need this and this is how you do it and you start with this and then you do that you don't need to go through all of it what you want to do is say something sort of along the lines of Every two weeks, you're going to want to change a small amount of water, about 25% of the volume of water uh, on a 10 gallon tank. Let's say that's what they're getting. So on a 10 gallon tank, you're going to be changing about 2.5 gallons of water. So if you look at our five gallon pails here, that's about half a pail. Every two weeks, it's going to take you maybe 15 minutes tops. That is a good, uh, a good way to show them what they're going to have to be doing on a regular basis. So they understand that this is something that has to continue to happen. Uh, you're not making it sound overwhelming because they don't know enough about the hobby for you to want to drag them through every single little nuance of how to main or do a water change or go through an entire water change. But you're giving them enough information that they understand it's not a scary thing. And you know, if this is the kind of person who doesn't have or doesn't want uh, to find the time every two weeks or one week or however often to do that water change, you've given them enough information that they can make that decision on their own and say, yes, you know, to me, that kind of commitment is worth it for what it is that I'd like to do with this tank. Or, you know what, turns out that aquariums are not for me. It is so, so important to give them enough information that they can make that decision. And if it sounds like fun and it sounds like it's worth it. And a lot of the time, if you just sound passionate about it, like, yeah, you know, it is a little bit of work, but I love my aquarium and I just, I, I will do that to you know have that aquarium in my life it's really not that big of a deal and you get used to it that's the kind of thing you want to say you don't yeah. want to be like no trust me it's so worth it you're gonna love this you don't push it on them let them make that decision because at the end of the day that is the most responsible way in my opinion to approach it and hopefully through that example you kind of see how you can approach all things when it comes to the aquarium feeding and not overfeeding so on and so forth so yeah awesome so glad you're in the industry yeah. it's, it's a lot of fun um you know I've been in it a long, long, long time. Yeah. Best of luck at your new job. Buddy. Yeah. It's, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's an enjoyable place to work, I would imagine. Your local fish store. If you're if totally. you're into the hobby and it's a passion of yours, that's got to be a, a great gig to have uh, solely just getting to walk around and spend all that time with all the fish. I spent so much time not where I was supposed to be when I worked at a store. <laughs> well, that's good. I was in the dry goods section and they would have to pull me out of like, they'd be calling me from the dry goods. Thomas, where are you? And I'm like off in the, the yeah. fish section, just yeah. staring at stuff. <laughs> At one point, my manager literally, <laughs> a little bit of a shame here, but whatever. <laughs> he he literally put a yellow piece of tape across the floor and said, Thomas, you are not allowed to uh, cross that tape. Uh, <laughs> this is the Thomas side of the store. That's not. But, but, but I'm guessing the tape didn't really. Heck no, oh, man. No. That's I'm good to put up an electric fence. I want to climb that sucker. But it's good for having people like that, right? Who oh, are yeah. that passionate and want to learn it, you know, be, sure. be everywhere. So that's good. And that's why you are. Where you are today in front yeah. of the camera because you know all this stuff. Um, I, I know enough. You know enough. <laughs> uh, I'd like to keep seahorses. What size tank would a good start for them and what plants will they need? Really depends on the type of seahorses you're keeping. Um, I think for the average seahorses you're going to come across in the industry, they're going to get maybe six inches, seven inches tall. Um, I would say a 40 gallon tank uh, somewhere. Ooh. The thing is they, they appreciate height a little bit more than most. So I would say if you can find a 40 gallon tank that is uh, taller than it is wide, you're probably off to a pretty good start for a pair. Um, some people have used 20 gallon extra highs, which are basically two 10 gallons stacked on top of each other. But I feel for an adult pair of your average seahorse, that's actually gonna be a little bit small for them. So um, 
is there a 30 extra high or a 40 extra high? Uh, look, some, somewhere in that uh, ballpark, maybe even a 53 gallon acrylic, hmm. 53 gallon acrylic um, column tank that you might be able to win when we hit 100,000 subscribers because we're having a huge giveaway. Very soon, because we're we're Very like soon. we're like twelve hundred subs away. We're so close. Yeah, it's crazy. Twelve hundred. Yeah. Subs. So column tank is is what you want. I would say somewhere in the ballpark of forty gallons. Plant wise, there's all kinds of different uh, macro algaes and um, things you can get for for uh, decorating a seahorse tank. Um, mermaid shaving brush. Some of these are a little harder to keep than others. Uh, sea turtle grass is pretty good. Calerpa of all different kinds is pretty easy to uh, keep going and it proliferates. You just got to keep it trimmed back. Um, but yeah, lots of options. Fake ornaments, fake corals are awesome for seahorses. They love to anchor themselves on them. I've also seen people use plastic chain link Oh, yeah? uh, from the bottom of the tank, it floats up, and then the babies especially will use that to anchor their teeny tiny little tails on. They're adorable when they're born, by the way. I've bred seahorses. It's, it's incredible. How many rams can I have in my 40-gallon breeder tank? Like, mm, what kind of ram? Uh, German blue? Also, also, one of my golden rams is isolating itself oh, and not yeah, eating. Yeah, yeah. So, golden ram, let's say that. Isolating themselves and not eating could potentially just be from bullying. So it's it's tough to say what's what's happening there, but keep an eye on them. Um, they want to know, can I dose medicine into the whole tank? Because they don't have another like quarantine. You, It's better to get a quarantine than to dose everybody in most cases, but it really depends. If you have plants in the tank, medicating can be very, very difficult without destroying the plants. If you have invertebrates, same thing. Um, so it's always best to uh, separate and medicate if you can. Um, how many can you have in a 40? As many as will really get along with each other. But I, I would say you could probably easily do two pairs in a 40 and not have much issue. They're pretty small fish. They, they're they not terribly aggressive with each other. So, Cool. Um, can I put hornworth plants with guppies? Won't it be too thick for them? No, just go for it. Sweet. Just to, What, are you going to fill the tank to the point that they can't move? <laughs> No, that's fine. <coughs> awesome. Uh, my plants, uh, Nubius, are covered in dots of allergy... What should Whoa. I what should I do? I keep light six to seven hours a day and use plant fertilizer. Um, you can try putting uh, a cleanup crew in the tank that's going to help remove that, like auto sinkless. Just keep in mind that you're also going to have to feed them other varieties of food, and not just hope that they live solely on algae. So, um, Anubias leaves are pretty robust. They're very very thick and uh, relatively leathery for a plant leaf. Um, you can use a small piece of paper towel. Take the plant out of the tank and wet paper towel with tank water and just do little circles uh, between your thumb and your finger, massaging the leaf just a little bit. You don't want to put a ton of pressure and you can usually get all the dots off. Um, this really only works with plants like Anubias that have very firm, firm leaves. So don't go trying it with your other plants. You're just going to destroy leaves on them. But uh, if you're having a hard time, you can start with that with the manual removal and uh, just have a look, do a test, see where your phosphates and your nitrates and stuff are at. and. Um, Try to figure out if uh, there's something you can do to help optimize the plant's growth and photosynthesis to outcompete the algae. Uh, that might help. Um, if you're not already using one, you could also try using a um, carbon source like uh, Seachem Flourish Excel to help kind of uh, those plants function well without a CO2 injection system. Cool. Uh, well, it's 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 about that time. We're running up on the two oh. hour mark. Uh, they're about to close my whole street for a big block party that the neighborhood is having. So you're going to be stuck here if you if we don't uh, get you out of here soon. Or I'll just be running people over. I won't do that. Um, I think what we uh, should do, we have a ton of questions, but I think what we're going to do, guys, is uh, tell you, join us next Saturday because it is our regu regularly scheduled Q&A. Sure. So join us next Saturday, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, and uh, get here on time. Put your questions as soon as you can, and that will ensure, because in those ones, we do go in sequence. Oh, yeah. uh, so the sooner you get your question in uh, by 11 a.m., uh, the better. Uh, so join us next week for a more Q&A. Um, we have a, a very nice comment here from uh, uh, from someone saying, I love watching you guys videos for a while after seeing the last video with all the passion and emotion for the projects you guys are doing i had to sub good luck on the basement rehab john thank you <clears throat> yeah no that's that, you know what there are there is a lot of uh, passion pretty, and emotion yeah. and i was gutted at the time i mean everything thankfully gets put into perspective when you really start to sit and think about it but you know the stress kind of hits you all at once that 
Brian came basically the day that I found out. Yeah. So you could imagine I hadn't even really processed it yet. You know, it's stressful for me and the family, you know, just it. But it is just stuff and everything's cool. We're good. We're going to keep on tanking no matter what. And, for sure. Uh, yeah. I'm feeling a lot better about it. It's just now it's just a, a delay in what we were planning on doing and a bit of kind of, I guess, uh, a derailment of a couple projects. But whatever. We will figure it out. We'll come up with new fun things like this uh, variety show. Yeah, I mean, it was a fun little experiment. But yeah, yeah so I'm showing you guys again uh, the basement as it is uh, right now uh, during the rebuild. So we're going to keep you guys updated on the progress of that and when we're going to be... Uh, what's the timeline, more or less, you said? for all It's about... Uh, they're thinking two months at worst. Yeah, okay. Uh, a month and a half. The, the, the deal is, like, it's really only three weeks from tear out to rebuild, but there is going to be a big lull while we wait for the insurance company, which I've never gone through this before, so I don't know. But uh, a big lull while we wait for the insurance company to um, do their part yeah. and uh, send all the funds to the necessary contractors and stuff to finish it all off and get everything going again. So, yeah, but <clears throat> we'll get there. Yeah, and I mean, we've got like some of our projects. We, you've got them moved upstairs. Yeah, so, got so the low-tech Planet Tank is now sitting on the high-tech Planet Tank stand upstairs. You can also see my axolotl goober in his uh, aquarium on the other stand there. And then the high-tech Planet Tank that was just filled with water <laughs> <laughs> is now on the dry start method again. Now it's, the, now it's more like the dry life method. I don't know. Well, uh, I'm just going to try to maintain it like this as long as possible. The stand for the low-tech tank was damaged, so I don't want to put a, like a full 20-gallon on it. Yeah, right now it's got yeah. a 10-gallon on it. I'm a little bit more comfortable with that. But, um, yeah, we'll fill that one back up as long as the uh, Baby Tears doesn't give me too much trouble, given yeah. that they've been submersed and now immersed again. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, we are looking forward to getting back in action with all that stuff. In the meantime, we are doing uh, our Q&As as per usual yep. and some other content. I'm finally, now it's a good opportunity. I'm finally going to do some videos with my kids setting up some of these Yay! tanks. It's, there's no better time if, if we don't have any other tanks that we can film with. Might as well and set when Brian's up. done, we'll do a Thomas Reacts to Brian's <laughs> Yo, tanks. Oh, it's going to be awful. <laughs> I'll blame it all on my kid because he's going to be helping. I'll blame, I'll blame him. I yeah. was four. Respectable parent. Yeah. It's the kid's fault. <laughs> That's my go-to every time. It's beautiful. Yeah. So we'll set these up. I, you know, I'll do some videos with uh, my four-year-old and myself setting these up because I'm not an Aquarius myself. Uh, I don't really have the desire to own a lot of tanks. Personally, we have so many at your house. I feel like they're mine as well. I don't have the desire to have them. He would. Yes. He would feel like they're his as well. Yes, but... But I, I do want to uh, kind of see uh, these tanks here, see how easy they are to set up for a parent who maybe wants their kid to have an aquarium but doesn't want to have a giant mega build in their house to, to, to deal with. It'll be, it'll be a good, even for like when we were talking about earlier about um, how you talk to people who are thinking about getting a tank but don't want to have one. That's right, yeah. This will be a good practice for somebody who truly doesn't really want a tank but wouldn't mind having one for their either their kids or just for the sake of looking at one in their house. And you never know, maybe I'll love it and decide, and then next thing you know, be suffering the multiples. You never really know. So we're going to start doing that series. It's going to be a very small series, but it'll be fun. And we'll have my four-year-old we'll four uh, in on it. So uh, all that said and done, um, join us next week, like I said, 11 a.m. And we'll have more content coming out, more video content. Our 100,000 subscribers. Subscribe if you're not subscribed to this channel. We're doing a huge giveaway yeah. of 100K. Yeah, I think you guys, if you're not subscribed, you want to be because there's so many prizes we're giving away, amazing prizes, gift, like not just great prizes from our vendor partners, but then also uh, Big Al's uh, as a company is giving away like $1,000 in uh, gift cards to our online website. So you can get whatever you want. Yeah, if you don't win what you want, uh, you can win uh, a pretty substantial uh, gift card to then go on our site and buy something that you do want. So uh, there's a ton of stuff we're giving away. You guys definitely want to sub up. As always, share. Like, share us. The, the, the faster we get to 100,000, the faster we can launch We're this giveaway. Far. We're we not far. We are not far. It's, it's like 1,200 subs. subs. Yeah, that's not going to be too long. That's like in the next two weeks, I think we're going to get oh there. But we'd love to get there sooner. So uh, share us out, uh, everywhere on social with your friends, with uh, people. Talk with about us at your local uh, aquarium shop at yeah, your local fish store yeah. talk about our channel share it and the sooner we get there the sooner you can win stuff i'm so excited yeah so we'll, we'll be putting out a video on that and the and the actual uh, details on how to enter once we can uh, actually do that uh so we're very excited for that um rachel's got multiple tank syndrome yeah 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 no i'm i'm a little nervous because if i set these up and i love it Welcome to my life. Yes, yeah, seriously. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, I see uh, you guys are still you guys for joining us on this variety show. We really appreciate that. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I wouldn't mind doing. Do you? If you guys liked it, uh, 
not only like it, but say something in the comments just so so we know if you'd like to see another one of these variety shows. We'll we'll do more. Yeah. Especially while we're in this weird lull while we're yeah, in the good, studio. To kind yeah, of, yeah, doing reacts and Q&As and product features. It's still something to bring you guys uh, educational I've already, stuff. I've already got an idea for the next product. Excellent. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, uh, we have someone here saying, if they missed your questions, definitely check out the support team. They're also great. Help yes, me out with are. a much needed water change. So awesome. that's so I'm going to link again the uh, the support uh, team uh, email down there. So if you have something really, really crucial that we haven't gotten to, uh, then email them and they'll be able to help you out and send them photos, videos, and as much context as you can. They'll help you out as well. I love the accidental aquarist. The accidental aquarist. <laughs> I just accidentally got a tank. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. That's, that's what I'm going to tell my wife from yeah, now on. I love I come it. home with extra aquatic stuff yeah it was the accident i don't know man like it just happened yeah cool all right well with all that said uh i think that's about it on my end um anything else from you yeah guys just keep on tanking even variety show style and be like sharks metal. thanks for watching metal sharks, metal sharks. And metal sharks. yeah <laughs>